The following Outlaw Radio audio presentation is parody. Please be a grown-up and accept the following program as it is intended. Some elements of Outlaw Radio may not be suitable for uh, anyone. There may be occasional content that offends you or that you find irrelevant. If that is the case, we are doing our job. Accordingly, listener discretion is advised. Outlaw Radio is not for everybody, but neither is Kim Chi. Doohickey, you know, the doohickey that rolls. Hi, this is Meatloaf. Okay, kids, you know what time it is? You know what time it is? It's Outlaw Radio time! This is Sean Young on Outlaw Radio. <laughs> hey, this is Shelly Berman on Outlaw Radio. Listen, come on, listen to me or listen to Matt. It, if you like being bored, it's great for you. <laughs> it's Robert Hayes. I'm here on Outlaw Radio with Magic Matt, a.k.a. The Weasel. We are here to drink. We're here to smoke. We're here to interrupt. You may drink. You may smoke. You may interrupt. But I'm here to... F- Live from the Lighten Up Lounge, this is Dom DeLuise saying, this is Outlaw Radio. Hi, this is Chuck Woolery at Lighten Up Lounge on Outlaw Radio. There's lots of fun, guys. Be back. Two and two. Hi, this is Gilbert Gottfried, and you're listening to Outlaw Radio, where we smoke, we drink, and occasionally we bother people who look old and weak. Hi, this is Rick Dees with Magic Matt, a.k.a. Mr. Cigar, in the Lighten Up Lounge. We drink, we smoke, we interrupt. night's sleep. I could not sleep. It had nothing to do with the uh, bad poker hand. It was our monthly tournament last night. And I wouldn't change a thing in the last hand. I mean, I had to do what I had to do. I came in sixth, thanks for asking, so I'm still in the money. I still get points. But damn it, that Chris nails me every freaking time. He should well, stick to his rapping, Chris Brown, right? Yeah, but it's yeah. different Chris Brown. Oh. He's the one that uh, oh. doesn't beat his wife. Oh, I mean, that, that, well, yeah. that we're aware of. All right. Hey, welcome to the Big Dog of Broad Chasing. Meant to say casting Outlaw Radio live from the Light in the Blonde. Smoking, drinking, interrupting. But I didn't sleep, and I got home early, relatively early, midnight But I couldn't sleep because I knew that this man was going to be on the show today. And and excited as hell because I thought we almost lost him at Cato Kalin's wedding. We had some nice conversations at his home. And then I said something really stupid. I said, you know, some might say that Airplane 2 was even funnier than Airplane 1. <laughs> and this man then says, uh, he just sort of glances over at me and said, we had nothing to do with that. That's what I'm thinking. What you had nothing to do with the what the, the half the writing. The, we had nothing to do with that, man. And then he looks over at this uh, gaggle of beautiful women, and I'm thinking to myself, I just lost the man. <laughs> I just I just screwed myself. I think he, he slowly disappeared after that because <laughs> because this this man I appreciate so much, and and to the point where I had a conversation with. Well, airplanes, Robert Hayes, a.k.a. Captain Stryker. And I said, how do I buy this thing back? And he said, well, you could grovel. You could send him some, uh, you know, pre-made Manhattans or some sort of bourbon product. He said, I don't know if he's still doing the bourbon. But uh, so instead, we uh, we sent him a podcast of the segment of uh, Robert and I speaking of this 
great man. And one of the things that Robert mentioned was, he said, did you really think Airplane 2 was funnier? And I said, no. He said, well, there it is. Why the hell did you even say it? Because I guess I was trying to kiss his ass. Tequila, tequila. I, so, and I said that I'm not an ass kisser, and I never have been. Never been. And the one time I attempt to kiss this man's ass, <laughs> see what happens? Backfired and, on you. Yeah. yeah. So they had nothing to do with Airplane 2, and that's why Airplane 1 is the funniest movie of all time. Ever. Ladies and Doberman, the creator, producer, writer, along with his brother, this, my friends, is the great and ubiquitous David Zucker. Right there, David Zucker. David. Thank you. Do I do I speak now? <laughs> I that, was, that was the longest introduction I've ever had. <laughs> and uh, Yeah, but the most fun. Did you ever see uh, Ruthless People? Oh, man. Hey, by the way, I... On my daughter's life, I love that movie. I saw it at the theater. Oh. You got my oh, money. Good. So then you know you know the details of it. You know, and you, Matt, reminded me of my favorite line in the movie, which is when you said that thing about airplane two. <laughs> yeah. There's a one point where one of the cops says, "This could well be the dumbest man on the face <laughs> of the earth," <laughs> and that's what came into my mind. Yeah. And so, love and it. I thought that's why I had to do this show <laughs> yeah but yet but yet, this is intriguing <laughs> but yeah yeah but yet david zucker shows up yeah. you know what what is a nice uh, uh milwaukee wisconsin kid uh, doing at a dive bar like this that's david? a long story <laughs> yeah. Yeah. as long as the introduction yeah yeah I, I come for the introduction and then i leave yeah we had yeah. we had some great conversation then i then i knew that i that i blew it yeah we were going great yeah, yeah. you guys yeah. were yes. yeah, uh, yeah. who's this guy is nice he seemed yeah, right, right. And then, yeah. wham. And then, yeah, yeah, boom. Downhill quick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, uh, well, yeah, that's why when I left, David, I, I said, hey, thank you for having us. By the way, that's great. my brother, Mark. I said, great time. Yeah. And, and David kind of gave me a look, wait a minute, you're, you were that dude, huh? That, uh, <laughs> yeah. Give me that Every, look. <laughs> everyone is suspect around that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you were that. This whole family here, <laughs> someone's dead, I don't know. I mean, what the hell? You were that a-hole, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> I also mentioned, I said, uh, what do you, well, I asked him, the question, uh, David Zucker, I asked him, uh, Mad Mad World, uh, you think that's a funny movie? And David, let me paraphrase, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but it's so rare. Um, you mentioned that when you saw it as a kid, you thought it was funny as hell, and then your dad told you uh, son, it's not a funny movie. Well, I, I, I yeah. begged them to see it because it was so funny. It's the funniest movie i ever seen. And so they came back from the theater and said, it wasn't very funny. Right. And so it took me maybe 10 more years to realize that they were right. <laughs> that, it, that, it's, that it's a movie yeah, about just, great skits and yeah. there are funny parts. Yeah, but it doesn't, it doesn't hold up. No. I mean, I, I loved... Who was the one who destroyed the gas station? Was it Jonathan, Jonathan Winters? Winters. Oh, that yeah. was funny as hell. I, I, just, I just fell out of my chair. Yeah. I was, um, you know, so... But I don't know. I haven't seen it since then. Yeah, it, uh, and it doesn't hold up. Yeah, um, maybe not. It's one of these mics is making a lot of noise, Laura. Uh, try, to, try to figure it out. I know it's not David's because uh, he's a director, and he doesn't make uh, obscene noises. I mean, most of the time. How about this, uh, jo this is it Jack or Jock Tati? Were you an aficionado of this guy, this French uh, I, uh, comedic actor, writer? Yeah, amazingly, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And I I was a fan. Yeah, he did a couple of movies, uh, Mr. Hulot's Holiday. That That's his most famous. Some great slapstick right. bits. You remember the one with, when he's in the boat uh, on the ocean and uh, he's painting and he misses the can, and the can is swept out to the sea, and then the can arrives right back in time for him to put his brush in there. Did you love that bit? Well, no, I didn't that love it. That was in Jacques Tati 2. Yeah, but I, yes. it's not that I love the bit. I, I am fascinated how they shot that. How did they get that shot? Now, do you have some inside knowledge on I don't, that? I don't remember the bit. Yeah. Uh, seriously, uh, to tell you the truth, I don't remember the bit, but I do remember when he was... He stepped on a fake fox on a rug, <laughs> right? And the and the fox was following him because yeah. it was a, it was tied to his shoe, <laughs> right? And then he was scared. And we actually, when we were shooting the first Naked Gun, we t tried to do that bit. 
with Leslie Nielsen. Right. And I mean, it didn't work. <laughs> but I mean, we thought it was funny. We tried it. We tried it out in previews. It, it didn't get a laugh, so it was cut. But yeah. we loved some of that. Do, do you think? Do you, do you think Jerry Lewis stole a lot of that, or or not stole, but that was uh, certainly uh, in, uh, inspiration for him? Well, I, he he could have. You know, I just saw something where he was doing the boxing stuff that Chaplin did. So he did, yeah. Jerry Lewis borrowed from... Well, he loved Chaplin, yeah. you know. Huge. By the way, the Naked Gun movies, my God, some of my favorite movies also. Leslie Nielsen and, and everybody. Yeah, Jerry Leslie Lewis. was great. Yeah. Ronnie Shell, yes? Jerry Lewis. Jo uh, Ronnie's mic is not on, uh, Lori. It, yeah. It is, huh? I think you turned the wrong one down. No. Me? Yeah. What do I do now? What? See, Ronnie is here early, and I did tell him 30 minutes into the show. Well, because I'm, I have, I'm old. I, I want to go take a nap. You are, <laughs> but you're only 90 years old, 90. right, Ronnie Shell? Hey, David Zucker, only. have you ever met the <laughs> great only. comedic icon, Ronnie Shell? I have never met him. But, but you know the man. You know, know his work. I know his work. Yeah. Yes. Is he well, a guy? I want to just make a statement about that. Uh, Totti? Uh, about Jock Totti. Yes. No, I can't remember what the hell it was. Okay, well, Jerry Lewis. <laughs> oh, Jerry Lewis. Yes. You know who his inspiration was? Yes. Who guess? Uh, uh, Charlie Chaplin. Nope. Who? Did you know? No, I did not. Hunts Hall. Oh. Okay, see, I don't know. You watch any Hunts Hall, Leo Gorsi movie, yeah. and he's always going... Uh. Yeah, I should have started this show with the asterisk. You have to be over 80 to enjoy it well, <laughs> and understand what we're talking about. But it is true. Yeah. He got it from Hunts Hall. Yeah. Who was brilliant. Uh... I must tell you that uh, probably uh, my my first or second favorite scene in Airplane, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar oh. and the kid. Oh, yeah. My God, when he's busted his ass oh, yeah. about his, <laughs> right? his playing. Well, we actually lucked into that one because uh, in the when we originally wrote the script, it was Pete Rose. Wow. And okay. It didn't it didn't last much beyond. You're Pete Rose, he, and then no, I'm so and so, and that that was it. But uh, Pete Rose, it was baseball season, so we couldn't use Pete Rose, and we we called Kareem, and he signed on to do it, and we added all that stuff. It was brilliant, yeah, it was so very, cool, brilliantly very funny. Yeah. Yeah. Wow! And Kareem played it perfectly. Yeah, he did because he's a non-actor. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. true. And then so there are so many movies that had uh, sports figures playing. I mean. For decades and decades, they would do this. And how so, long did it? How long did it take Barbara Billingsley to talk? What well, jive? Well, actually, yeah, the, jive. the two guys, uh, the 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 black dudes uh, who were cast in the part, taught her. They made up their own dialogue. Right. We, we did not write that. We did the best that uh, three white Jewish guys from Milwaukee, <laughs> could, right. which was uh, limited to mofo she something <laughs> yeah, like that we didn't yeah. know anything but these guys study it up on the dialects and and they did the whole thing and then uh they taught her how to do it hey laura laura p uh, punch into the instant replay a i n t punch that in and then hit it okay hey, no thing. hey don't forget my son the producer's Lou here louder your son the hey, producer no ronnie one more time. Oh, ain't no thing. I've been using that drop in on the radio, David Zucker. I probably owe you money for this for at least 30 years. After you pay me for the airplane, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You'll never get paid. I'm trying to pay you back with the. Never, you know, I. So, redeem so, 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 David, you're, so you're off the bourbon now? You're not, or you don't, you're, you, because I, you drove yourself over here, you're not going to imbibe. No, I stopped drinking and I would drink uh, Woodford Reserve yeah, and then good stuff. I replaced that with uh, uh, gin martinis. Oh yeah. And yeah. then uh, summer came and I started doing gin and tonics. Well, I do gin and uh, club soda. Right. And then I was doing uh, Quavassier for a while. Right. And cognac. Oh yeah. But then I, I couldn't think straight. Mm. So, um, and then lately I just stop doing the 5 p.m. Oh, no kidding. Three. Yeah, just stop. I'm I'm trying to start again. I'm get, I'm going to get in. They have a program I'm going to get into to start, to <laughs> yeah, start don't, drinking. Don't, don't be a quitter. Right yeah, I know. Well, don't, well, don't be a quitter. I, I'm ashamed of it. <laughs> well, by the way, David Zucker, we'll, we'll teach you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. this is part of the program. Right. Yeah, right. There, there's a reason why you're here. I'll try. I don't know. <laughs> how about, how about hey, David, your, your president today, how about him falling off a 10-speed? 
I <laughs> did not see that. That's yeah, it's just happening. Yeah, it fell off at ten speed. Well, I, You're president, David. Sad. I, it's not. It, it's not funny to me because <laughs> right. if, if he, if God forbid he dies, yes. oh, then, then it gets worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my God. And, oh, this is terrible. <laughs> terrible. So I, I pray every day for his health. Yeah. I do too. Yeah. Although you know who's really in charge? I mean, who's in charge? Don't make me uh, sing. Who's Ob in charge, Obama? David? I didn't ask I, you, Mart. I'm asking the great David Zucker. I don't. I think there must be a cabal of people. Uh, yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. Directed by George Soros. You and, bet, because it ain't him. And Obama that are, are probably uh, orchestrating things. How about that? How about a, a guy like this, a prominent? I mean, a more than prominent man in Hollywood, as in David Zucker. And, and going out on a limb, or did you feel you were going out on a limb to express your political leanings? I was not smart enough to realize how much of a limb I went out. Boy, you and I both, man. <laughs> I have screwed myself. Oh, man. But, Why do you um, think we're doing a show in yeah. my backyard? <laughs> Why do you think David's here with you? Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think I live in my garage? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, if you had to do it all over again, uh, would you shut the F up about it? Oh, well... I probably I did a movie, a whole movie called Ameri An American Carol. It was great. I was yeah. there at the premiere with our friend Robert Hayes. All right. I, yeah. I mean, at the time, I was I really wanted to do it because I think I, if we're all going to be honest here, we might as well be. You know, uh, well, no one listens to this, right? No, yeah, no, good, no. So I'm I'm fine. <laughs> no, but, and they're uh, certainly not watching on YouTube right now right. at Magic Matt's Outlaw Radio. That's right. Right. Uh, you know, I I figured. Uh, you know, what happened was that, I mean, I totally miscalculated because uh, it, was a, it, I, it was a movie where we made fun of the left. Yes. And I wrote it with a high school friend of mine who's a brilliant comedy writer who's a lefty, you know, total lefty. Right. And we wrote it together. And we didn't realize that the left has no sense of humor about itself. They Absol can't laugh at themselves. Absolutely and I'm, not. And I'm not saying, I mean... Right. All my, my some of my best friends, my relatives, they're all on that, and they don't see the humor in it. And Republicans don't go to see movies. Right. So right. Yeah. I was screwed. I think mean, <laughs> yeah. either way, that right. was the end of that. Right so out of the box, I you lost not money. Have, I probably would not have done it again. Yeah. Right. Right. But it was a great it flick. Great. No, I'm glad I did it. I mean, yeah. Why? No, I'm, that's not true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what am I saying? Yeah. Hey, one of our uh, mutual friends, uh, Bobby Hayes, how are you, my friend? They're on uh, one of the islands out there where you're three hours earlier than we are here in Los Angeles. Bobby Hayes. Hello? <laughs> okay. Say, say hi to your boss, David Zucker. <laughs> Hey, Bob. Well, I would if he was here. How are you doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, mister. Hey. Matt went over and kidnapped him because he would—he refused to do the show. So. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Robert, do, do you have a favorite scene in, in this movie? Uh, or is that tough because you're in the movie, so it must be a scene that you're in? Uh, you're talking about airplane too, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. Like, yeah. I'll yeah. never, I'll you never, know, never we, live. We this. know that one like the back of our hand. Never live this yeah. down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I told him, David. I told him. I told Matt. He doesn't have a chance in hell of ever getting back on the right side of you. <laughs> well, that's that's true. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess that's a, that's a no. You like the entire uh, body of work in airplane um, one. Favorite scenes? I've got several favorite scenes in it. Yeah, I'm and it keeps changing because I think of other ones that I love too. I love the the um, uh, Peter Graves and uh, uh, Leslie. Leslie. When he comes up and says, how long before we can land? I can't tell you. You can tell me I'm a doctor. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I just don't know. Well, can't you take a guess? Well, not for another three hours. You can't take a guess for three hours? No, no, no. I mean, you just can't land. Yeah. That one, I That's love really, that one. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and the when, timing, of course, is just perfect. Those guys were just perfect. Well, and when, when Hayes says uh, it's a different kind of flying altogether, <laughs> and so they yes. both say it's an entirely different kind of flying. <laughs> yeah. And then Hayes, uh, most people don't realize or know this consciously, but he does something with his eyebrow yeah, to he, react to it. Yes, he does. Yeah. Yes, like, he does. Just it, for a second, like, that was weird, and then goes on. <laughs> See, Robert, that, that's your brilliant shining through, Robert Hayes. Huh? 
<laughs> but I'm only saying it because, like, Kareem would not have thought to do that. Yes. Right. Yeah. Not, a, not a professional actor. Yeah. 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 But you, me you mentioned Kareem not being a professional actor, and he pulled off that uh, bit so perfectly. He, perfectly, yes. Maybe if Robert Hayes w were not a professional actor, maybe he would have been better in the movie. Right. Bobby? <laughs> probably. Any? That's I'm probably absolutely right. I think that um, uh, Crazy Legs Hirsch, I think Kareem outshone him by miles. I, I don't know if they know what you're talking about. He's no. talking about Zero Hour, which Airplane yeah, is based on. Yes. 1957, and Crazy Legs Hirsch, who was a star halfback at the University of Wisconsin, Badgers. Right. Uh, played. And Rams. Was that the one with Dave yeah. Andrews? Dana Andrews and yeah. Linda Darnell yeah. and Sterling Hayden. Yeah, yeah. You, you and I. Dana both. Andrews played. Dana Andrews played Ted Stryker. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. The name. Yeah. That's da that's David, you, you, you and I share that we we find the B and C movies the funniest. I I love those movies. Right, and that's what that's how we thought of doing Airplane as as we did it. Instead, we were first. Our first thought was to redub it. Uh, Zero hour. Right. But then we thought, well, why don't we just recast the whole thing with, you know, those actors who would have taken those parts? Right. So uh, Bob Hayes is the modern day Dane Andrews. Yeah. Yeah. And it was mad. Or the modern day B or C actor. Yeah. Well, the modern day or the modern day Linda Darnell. <laughs> and, but but it was it was pure magic. <laughs> Linda Darnell, next Oprah. <laughs> hey, listen. Uh, this movie was it was it, it, lightning in a in a bottle. It was and remains and holds up today as yes. legend, comedian <clears throat> legend Roddy Shell went on record unsolicited, which is one of the reasons why Roddy is here today, but unsolicited. We just happened to be BSing about a week ago. Out of nowhere, I am not making this up, he said, you know, I, I watched that uh, airplane last <laughs> night. This honest to God, David. He said, I watched that airplane. I said, did you? He said, yeah, that movie holds up. One of the funniest son yeah. of a bitch in movies I've ever seen in my life. If Did, not the funniest. If not well, the funniest. A compliment. I mean, uh, but, well, if you find yourself laughing when you're by yourself <laughs> watching it, I was doubling over three or four times. Yeah, but wow. you're 90 years old, Ronnie. Yeah, so I laugh at everything, but yeah. uh, I did happen to laugh at that. No, yeah. <laughs> Even my son, my son and his friends, they all love it. And yeah. they're, they're young. And they, they, they're, they, they got turned on to this like a year or two ago. Because it's ageless. They, it's they love it. It's, it's, ageless. Okay. it's ageless. Well, I, it, I love that the gener succeeding generations yes. are, are finding it. Well, there's something how, to be... How old are they? How old are the kids? How old are they, Mark? 33? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my daughter's 18, I mean, uh, sorry, 28, and my son's 33. It's a no apology hey, zone, Mark. You mean they just, they <laughs> just found out about it now? No, 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 no. no. Yes. Ronnie just did. No, yeah. no, 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 they've known, they just showed, Robert, they've known about it forever. I mean, of course, you know my oh. daughter, yeah, and she, no, well, they've it, known you for a long time. There are only two things that Ronnie watches, and uh, as I've discovered, that's Airplane, the movie. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Number one, never number two, never number two. Uh, and Huel Hauser, big fan of Huel Hauser. <laughs> yeah. I love Huel. Yeah, yeah. 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 Remember Huel Hauser? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's perfect. Perfect. Even like, yeah. Yeah. California gold. gold. Get a yeah. get a shot of this he over here, yeah. Jake. Get a little shot. Oh of Oh my this. God! Look, is that a ketchup bottle? Yeah, it says ketchup, <laughs> or is it ketchup? <laughs> Just get a close up. In all those uh, uh, interviews with him, I was always looking for some kind of uh... what. Oh, a hint that he was gay? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but I, he, he, he did it he very gay. well. Yeah. <laughs> David, David, David said he was gay? <laughs> All right, when we return... Uh, well, I think he was. I may have been we, wrong. We are chock full of stuff with the great and ubiquitous David Zucker, Robert Hayes, Captain Stryker on with us, and legend Ronnie Shell. All that of and um, less in minutes and, on Outlaw Radio. Don't, don't, forget, don't forget Jacques Tati. And Jacques Tati. Don't go away. We'll be this after back.
is Outlaw Radio. <laughs> the man who they said would never appear on Outlaw Radio is here. <laughs> David can, Zucker. Can I at least say that I'll never appear on this again? <laughs> okay, well, you can say it, but yeah. we won't believe you. <laughs> David David Zucker, creator, writer, director of uh, Airplane One, and a, a myriad of uh, funny stuff. If it's funny, it's him. Kentucky Fried Movie. Oh, yeah. You know, that was oh, one of my yeah. faves, man. Classic. Right. Actually, yeah. we wrote Airplane before we did uh, Kentucky Fried Movie. But we couldn't sell, we couldn't get it financed. So uh, John Landis came to see our show and said, why don't you do a movie of your show and I'll direct it. And that's what happened. So that's how Kentucky Fried Movie got made. Did that make so, some money? Oh, I mean, yeah, tons. I mean, it was. It only cost $600,000 to make, and I think it made $20 million. Whoa, wow. Yeah, yeah wow. nice. Didn't you find J John Landis unfunny? That's right. No, no, he's very funny. That's right. He's a great think guy. So. Really? Yeah. Oh, and I met him all the time at the park with our dogs. Oh, no. And he would he's always a, tell he, me stories, but none, none of them were funny. Oh, no. Here oh, we go. This oh, is well, fight. that was not my reaction. <laughs> no, mine neither. Well, I, but was someone a... told me that. I think he was <laughs> yeah. one of the You funniest. haven't actually met anyone, Ronnie. <laughs> no. In no. person. Okay. Yeah. So I actually <laughs> met John Landis in person. No, I, know, I don't and even know. And he's funny. And, yeah. I knew Kennesaw Landis. Yeah. That's the uh, baseball. Commission. Baseball czar. Yeah. <laughs> See, we're talking this language that nobody else. Oh, I don't, I don't. And he wouldn't have any African Americans. <laughs> That's right. Well, they were called colored people. <laughs> Negroes. Yeah, okay. yeah, but the blacks, if you don't mind, they weren't even called that then. No, no. Uh, David, What's his name? Uh, yes, uh, a guy Shell? from Alabama. Uh, 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 no idea. The great uh, uh, no. uh, yeah. governor. Okay. F uh, not Fobus, the yeah. other one. Oh, uh, George Wallace. George Wallace yeah. called him, uh, if you don't mind this, because I don't agree with it. Yeah. Well, now wait, be careful. Negris. Okay, all right. Well, yeah. I think we're getting, uh, we're getting off the subject yes. of me. Yeah, we are. And, yeah. Yeah. Yes, subject. we are. That's right. And getting back on the yeah, subject right, yes. of <laughs> him, David Zucker, and Bobby Hayes, Robert Hayes, a.k.a. Uh, Captain Stryker from Airplane. Um, <laughs> And correct me if I'm wrong with this quote, but it, it made me chuckle. Working with O.J. Simpson was great. His acting was a lot like his murdering. He got away with it. Is that you? Was that, that you? Was no, it was not me. It was not you. No, it was good. But funny. Yeah, it's funny. Okay, how about this? I'm not really obsessed with the Alamo. I just love the souvenir shop. Is that you? That could have been me. Okay, that could be you. How about the toughest part of getting old is things that were once easy are, are now hard and things that, well, that's, you know, we that know where that's going. could have been anyone. Yeah, that yeah. could have been anyone. But, but I wouldn't have made that joke. Okay, how about this? In all my movies, you will see a reference to Davy Crockett. That's me. Okay, his picture hangs on the wall of most of my movies, but that's just a coincidence having to do with my bringing the picture to the set and having the grips hang it prominently on a wall. What are the odds? <laughs> what is a grip? Yeah, that's <laughs> now that's grip. funny. <laughs> now that's funny. See, that's my sense of humor. Yes. Uh, supposedly, uh, supposedly, uh, Mr. Uh, Zucker is uh, quoted as saying, you'll... Uh, quit now, you'll never make it. If you disregard this advice, you'll be halfway there. Was that you? Could that, that... that was absolutely me, and I said it when, when uh, we were uh, doing a Q&A after screening one of the movies, and some somebody asked, what, would you, what advice would you give to a young person wanting to get into the entertainment business starting yeah. out? And I thought for a second, I just said, quit now, you'll never make it. <laughs> yeah. and, so, and it got a big laugh. And then yeah. during the laugh, I was saying, oh, my God, I sound like a complete asshole. <laughs> so, uh, so then, and I said the second part of it. And uh, that, that quote has been, you know, reprinted in yeah. a lot of, a lot of things. books and in uh, uh, lists of great <laughs> inspirational because, quotes. Because, because, well, but, yeah. it, but it's a brilliant line. Hey, Bobby, Robert Hayes, Captain Stryker, did you find yeah. David funny on the set, or was he a hard-nosed uh, piece of crap director that got under your skin? I was there when he said that line, by the way. Are <laughs> you were there? Yeah. So, yeah. so you're evading we, my we question? Doing, <laughs> yeah, we were doing a question and answer with the uh, yeah. audience. Um, so I was there for that historic moment. Okay, Robert, um, let, me, let me rephrase this. Yeah. What was the question? How, okay. <laughs> Bo Bobby He's getting old. Bobby, Bobby Hayes, how meticulous did you find Mr. Zucker here 
in creating comedy in the movie Airplane. How meticulous was he with timing, and was there many a reshoot because it didn't quite hit it? You don't think it hit it? Okay, you're not listening to me, Robert. I'm, <laughs> I'm saying that because I get the impression that David Zucker is a, a, a man who pays attention to detail. So were there a gazillion takes, or was there a one and done? Well, first off, you got to understand that D David and Jerry sat in the room, the booth, with the taped-off monitor for what was going to be on the screen, and Jerry was out next to the camera, um, you know, saying that action, whatever, and then they would get together and they would talk about it and then say, great, Grant, let's move on. Or they'd say, no, we need another one. That didn't come into the scene or that didn't, didn't come in too far and it shouldn't have or whatever. Right. So it was like three bodies with one brain because one would start a, a, a sentence the other would do the middle of the sentence, and the last one would finish the sentence. And they did that all the time. Yeah. And so it was, if you say, was David's timing meticulous? Well, yeah, David, Jerry, and Jim's timing was absolutely incredible. But that's why they're, to me, that's why I just think they're geniuses, is because yeah. they not only wrote this and then polished it and polished it as they went back and rewrote, I don't know, what, five years worth, David? Something like that? It was five years till wow. uh, Airplane yeah. was made. Wow. wow. So they had it all, they, people ask me all the time, did you, they just, someone asked me just the other day, this many years later, they said, how much improv was in that? And it was not. It was so tight. It was the tightest script I've ever read. Yeah. And 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 it was not only what they wrote. It was so funny. I mean, literally, Ronnie's talking about laughing out loud. When I first read the script, I was on a plane going back to uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul, and there was something on every single page. Without a doubt, every single page had something that made me laugh out loud, made me at least chuckle out loud, or big laugh, big guffaw. And that was because of the writing. But then, on top of that, you add in their editing and their sense of timing. Right. And that, that's what made it, because there's similarities with other films we could think of. When you look at the cutting, you, think, you look at the editing and the sense of the timing, and it, it could have been funny, and it wasn't. Well, hey, or funnier uh, Robert it. Hayes, ca case in point, and here I here I go again. Oh God, I'm going out on a limb because, <laughs> oh, no. but but I have to say it because Don't do it, it. <laughs> because it's the honest to God truth. Scary oh. movie, two, oh, God. unwatchable, not funny in any way, shape, or form. I know, without doing the research, I know that David Zucker had nothing to do with that movie because if I may be so bold, that movie was a pile of S. It was crap. Now, enter David Zucker for three and four. What I'd love to know is the genesis Oh, and, and I have my own thoughts, so let me throw this out there. I'm thinking that, okay, two must have made a buck or two somehow, even though it is a horrid piece of crap. Now, it had to make a buck or two. But the movie company, whoever is in charge, must have said, okay, you need somebody who can direct this thing and make it a real movie. I, am I close? And then you came in? How did well, this work, David? You're kind of close but uh they everybody thought spoof was dead and then keenan ivory wayans came right. in and did an amazing job of scary movies well the scary movie one yeah. had its great moments right yes it did i i saw it i thought it was funny but, yeah and then two Ooh. you you may not be able to bl completely blame the wayans for that uh, one because okay I know from working with that studio that they have a lot of input. Control. Yeah. They have a lot of control. So right. I don't know what happened on that set. Well, I'll tell you so what happened. I, a lot of scatological humor that yeah, was unneeded. I know. But yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't. I would. I would actually defend the Wayans on that. I. I, I think they're I, brilliant they very, guys. Brilliant guys. Very talented. Anyway, right. so whatever happened after two, 
uh, didn't perform as well as one. But isn't that perfect, so though? They, two this, was two. Yeah, it's two, yeah, yeah number that, two. In those days, was. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so the studio came to me and said, you know, would you like to do, you know, Fix three? Fix this. And, uh, and at the time, they, they said, we want to do it, uh, spoof on signs in the ring. You've seen those, right? And I said, of course. And I had not even heard of them. <laughs> yeah, I, did, I had to rush out and see it. <laughs> right. And so, and they had a script, and but it was horrible. And so, uh, I don't I can't remember who wrote it. So, uh, I recruited Craig Mazin and Pat Proft to write an original script for right. three and... and it, it ended up working out. Pretty Absolutely. Well. So not only did you direct it, you 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 fixed the entire damn movie. Well, we we, we transformed it from well the, the Wayans did it R rated, which worked well for them. Right. And I I was more comfortable in PG thirteen. So yeah. That's what we did. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that uh, your your favorite movies are the the B movies, Zero Hour, of course, the classic that Airplane is based upon. Did you miss, no, there's no way you missed this movie. One of my favorite, worst movies of all time called, get ready, David, Mole People. Never saw it. Starring Hugh Beaumont, John Agar, and uh, Alan Napier, who is very flamboyant in this movie. Very flamboyant. <laughs> is, that, is that the kind of the uh, euphemism for black? No, no, it is flamboyant, a, right? Let's go with. Uh, That's what he's saying. He did say, David. He said I, flamboyant. I don't no. understand <laughs> what he's saying. No, no. I'm, I guess I'm saying, uh, 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 folks who tend to dance with their hands above their head. Gay is that, what you're that, saying. Is that what I'm saying, That's Ronnie Shell? Saying, yes. Okay, yes. Uh, uh, gay. Yeah, he's very flamboyantly Liberace like in this movie. The fact that you miss this movie blows my it. blows my mind because there that could be your next parody. Okay, well Mole People. I won't remember that, but text that to me. One of the yeah. one of the great <laughs> movies. I'll need your home mole number to do that. People. All right. David uh, just looked at me and went, Mole people? <laughs> yeah. 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 Actually, I know the movie. You, David, oh, yeah, it's classic. Kind of a cult classic. It okay. is the Black best. and white. I'll have to see that one. I love now, <laughs> now, another thing, and this is why I'm so damn happy that this man decided to take time out of his busy schedule of drinking and eating to come all the way here from Brentwood to be with us. Um, the, the man responsible for the greatest comedies of all time, <laughs> he says that he loved a movie that I happen to love. Big Fish. Oh. Big Fish. Love it. Uh, yeah, I, I guess so. Oh. I can't That was like Damn. before 1998. <laughs> Bob. Bob. Yeah. Bob, am I wrong again? You know, I, you know, I, David, I, David I, put your keys away. Hold on yeah. a second. Put your keys hold, away. You know, I know where he gets <laughs> all this stuff. It's, <laughs> it's on, this stuff is on the internet. Oh, hold on, David Zucker. David Zucker, did you not say you love that movie and you think it's the best movie of the year, hands down? Well, that's a quote from like 30 years ago. But <laughs> it's still, it's you. David I, Zucker, it's, if it's you, it's I've you. I've changed. I've changed. Did you not say really impressed with that? You I've didn't say a lot of things that I regret now. <laughs> <laughs> I just, Including, yeah. but not limited to, I will be there uh, on yeah, Saturday. That's right. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, how about this? Let's switch okay, gears. Let's try another bad quote. <laughs> okay. What, what the hell? Uh, Kamala Harris, who lives in your neck of the woods, David Zucker. She has a, a palatial oh. mansion in Brentwood. Right. Yes. She walks her dog by my house every day. Oh, every isn't day. that oh. fun? Yeah. yeah well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, Kamala, and uh, if you, you want to know how to pronounce her name, just think communist Kamala Harris partied with Hollywood elites as, of course, inflation, gas prices uh, crushing American families. And I'm just wondering, because David Zucker, of course, no stranger to being a Hollywood, I don't know about the elite part, but you're one of, you know, you're one of the Hollywood dudes. Did you party with Kamala when she was in town? No, I didn't. I you miss I that? I don't get invited to any parties. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I dated Nicole Nichols. Is who, who is that? The girl who was on uh, Star Trek. <laughs> oh, 
no, no. You're talking about nickel. Nickel nickels. Was that her name? Yeah. yeah. We um, dated for hula. a while. Uh, wait, hula, hoorah, hoorah. I did. No, what's her name? Hoorah. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Lovely lady. Nicholas. She's also a good singer. Michelle yeah. Nichols. Yeah. Michelle Nicholas. No, Nichol- Nichols. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Bobby, it seems like uh, you would know because you you dated her as well, did you not? No, but Ooh. I dreamed about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I, I need to get David Zucker's take on this Amber Heard Johnny Depp defamation oh, yes. trial oh, right. because this had my attention for at least a month. And Johnny Depp pissed me off when he made the, the nasty remarks regarding President Donald Trump. And I thought it was nasty, and I, and I had it just had it up to here with that Depp, who I don't think is the most intelligent dude on the planet. But I met him years ago, and I think he's a nice guy. What did he say? That, uh, he was you know, just talking about uh, uh, when was the last time a, an actor uh, yeah, killed assassinated a president. Yeah. A president. Well, he thinks, oh, he, he thinks and he's a pirate, And he too, said so. that in the crowd. And of course, the crowd who adores Johnny, and especially the the chicks in the crowd. Oh, Johnny! Anything you say, <laughs> oh my God, are we moist? Oh yes, I love hey. that. <laughs> Were you rooting for Depp? I have to say that I was. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Me oh, too. So 100%. Yeah. That's because we saw through Amber's crap, did we not? I think we see saw through, through her crap. Well, you know, we were just coming out of this whole thing of believe all women. And that's, yeah. we know that's bad. I wouldn't believe too. all men. Yeah. I mean, yeah. right. You, right. You just can't categorize. She lost that, that new movie, didn't she, because of this? Well, let's hope so. We'll be this after back <laughs> when we return in mere seconds on OutlawRadioLive.com. On YouTube, Magic Matt's Outlaw Radio. You're listening to OutlawRadioLive.com. Don't go away, folks. More with the great David Zook, Bobby Hayes. And we'll be right back after this.
the dive bar at the end of the Walk of Fame. The cartilage left over in a bag of Popeye's chicken. Chronic talk from stars, would-be stars, wannabes, and people who just want to hear themselves talk. This is Outlaw Radio with Magic Matt Allen. What a boy would be if Siegfried and Roy had a son. I looked over at David to see if he was laughing, but I don't think he was listening. I know. Find maybe... this funny. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> what, David? You know, we were talking about <laughs> David Zucker. You, you were talking about Amber Heard and the Depp thing. Yes. So it reminded me of. Do you guys ever get these things? They're scam texts. Oh, uh, yeah, all the say, time. Hi, Bill. Yes. This is, uh, do you want to go to the airport or something? All the time. So I just got, and I haven't really replied to them, but I did today to one. Mm. So I got this. Hi, Kevin. I am Cynthia. Have you completed the hotel plan that my assistant gave you? <laughs> Send it to my telegram. Uh -huh. So this is my reply is, no, sorry, I haven't completed it yet. Please forgive me. I find myself now embroiled in a lawsuit suing my ex for libel. <laughs> the bitch is crazy. <laughs> and so this, this person writes back, fuck you, I'll kill you. <laughs> And then I, I texted back, now I have to sue you, too. <laughs> oh, my. So it just reminded me of this. Oh, this that's David Zucker. Oh, yeah. Hey, R Robert Hayes, Captain Stryker from Airplane. You know, you were right about him. He thinks funny. He think David thinks funny. Yes. Yeah. Yes. His See, timing's still impeccable. Yeah, but Roberts isn't. Well. Listen, the thing, but the thing with yep. Bobby is he has nothing to worry about. He's sitting there yeah. in beautiful weather on the islands outside of Los Angeles. You don't have to put up with this bad, this this terrible governing of the state of California. So you're ha well, you have terrible governing there as well. But you have the gorgeousness and more macadamia nuts than you can stick in that pie hole. So you're a happy man, right, Bobby? <laughs> It's true. Yes. Ouch. My pie hole. Leave my pie hole alone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also yeah, dated... No. Oh, no. Roddy Shell? <laughs> yes? I also dated the wife of... Uh... No, I've dated people as well. <laughs> no, you know this woman. No, we have something in common. <laughs> you both dated. I, I date... Wait, let me finish. Yes, okay, I dated Roddy. this woman who played the wife of... Uh... Captain Over? <laughs> no, I guess. Yeah. She passed no, away. No, really? Okay. She, you know, uh, our, our executive producer, Howard Koch, would bring in these these people. He right. was... Yeah, he, he would always... Nice. Yeah. He, he, he was a great guy and you know, yeah. tell us about all these Hollywood stories. Well, legendary. He was in love with Ava Gardner. Uh, yeah. And uh, unfortunately, his wife accompanied him to the... To the sets. Well, whoops. And he was always saying, Oh, those legs. Ava Gardner. It's like, yeah. Yeah. And and I and at the time, you know, we were uh, thirty or thirty one. Yeah. And uh, I was wondering how can a sixty two year old have thoughts like that? <laughs> now that I'm seventy four, I realize that you can have thoughts. Yes, you, <laughs> you certainly can. Yeah. Yeah. They, they never go away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thank God. Yeah. Well, thank God, but uh, you know, without that love of uh, and I do, I do love the female form. No oh boy, I do love females. Yeah. And without that, I would be living in Brentwood right now, <laughs> uh, because it has cost me a fortune, a fortune. Uh, and there's no way to escape it if indeed you are a heterosexual male, which, by the way, uh, is not in vogue these days. And uh, I'm thinking about becoming either bisexual or homosexual <laughs> black lady. And you win. I, you win then. Well, because yeah. because this ain't helping me, man. <laughs> no. You know, no. taking this friggin' road and being very vocal about my politics has not helped me. Uh, the uh, right, the Radio Hall of Fame. Of course, I'm not in there this year. What happened? What did I predict? Yeah. What did I predict? We'll be this after back at OutlawRadioLive.com, on YouTube, at Magic Matt's Outlaw Radio. More with the great David Zucker and Ronnie Shell and the rest in mere minutes on Outlaw.
this is Meatloaf. Okay, kids, you know what time it is? You know what time it is? It's Outlaw Radio Time! I'm through with standing in line for some fun to begin, but I found a good thing, leaving me with a grin. It's time for Outlaw Radio to begin. You have the great Billy Gibbons here? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. He very I mean, I mean, I mean, he really just passed out. He did. Oh, yeah. 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 Hey, that didn't sound too bad. Uh, yeah. the lightning bolt fly on. <laughs> oh, man. We're here with Matt. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. At the light now. Our little outlaw radio. We're here with Matt. Yeah. And he's not fat. Mm-hmm. We got all his guys and girls in the house. Let me tell you, that's where it's at. <laughs> And that's, ladies and gentlemen, Matt Allen. Pass me a gallon. Fancy that uh, Big Fish Tim Burton movie, and you don't think Tim Burton is underrated? No, I have no recollection <laughs> of the fish movie. I real seriously, uh, Tim Burton did some great movies. It says it do? right here. This is a quote from from it's, David Zucker right here. Yeah, from 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so maybe back yeah. then you thought it was I, worthwhile. I, I did. I thought I was very <laughs> impressed with that. I also loved uh, Jerry Lewis then. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All those changes. By the way, re- rest in peace, the great Jerry Lewis. That's right. Oh, is he dead? Yeah, yeah, it happens. It happens. Not a very nice guy. Well, that's, you know, that's what they say, but I, I had a pleasant time with him. But, you know, I... Lori, are you hearing that? I do. I don't I'm know hearing it, too. Could, could you... Nobody's touching anything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe it's you fiddling. Uh, Robert Hayes, is it you? Uh, Captain Stryker? Yeah, you were fiddling? F- first time? Out of the country. Yeah. yeah, first time? First time? First time? <laughs> no, I've been nervous lots of times. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> see, that's Bobby. That's Bobby here with his, his boss. And you refer to this man, David Zucker, as your boss. I mean, he... He was your boss. And still is. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, you did it. You you've done a few things with Bobby since uh, oh, yeah. airplane. We we used to do uh, Wisconsin state of Wisconsin tourism commercials. Yeah, those are great, by we the way. We did one with Kareem. Yeah, very nice. funny. <laughs> very, very funny. I was a spokesman yeah. for Pacific Southwest Airlines for ten years. Is that right, Ruddy yeah. Shell? Yeah, in Wisconsin? <laughs> Go home. no in California. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which girl did you date? David, Z- <laughs> David Zucker, I, I, I must tell I you, we have a fan base in Wisconsin that love, uh, they love Outlaw Radio. So you will get some feedback from this show. Great. Go- I haven't said anything against <laughs> No, I don't think so. No, no, no. no. And, and P.S., there's nothing, in, in my opinion, there's nothing bad to say about Wisconsin. I have grown fond and in love with those people. And on my daughter's life, I would move there if it weren't for the winter. Right. That it's cold as hell. They have it? squeaky cheese though, man. Yeah. yeah. That's good stuff. I do love cheese squeaky cheese. Fun. Do you do you enjoy squeaky cheese? <laughs> Curd, I, cheese curds? I, again, cheese curds? Again, I haven't. But you're, I think I had cheese curds once, and they're good. But you're Wisconsin. But I'm a huge uh, Packer fan. So yeah. Oh, there yeah, you I'm, go. I'm yeah. I find cheese binding. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? So how happy, how happy is a David Zucker, one of the greatest directors of all time, how happy are you that Top Gun is kiss, kicking butt? Very happy. It's yeah. great. I saw it, and... I hate everything, but it's <laughs> it was great. That I mean, I would tell everyone to see it, and uh, I, I also loved uh, 
uh, Jim Abrams and Pat Proff's movie Hot Shots. Mm, oh yeah, oh yeah, Which me, me too. I love as a spoof of the original. I love it, and I think they should do another one. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, they should spoof this. Yeah. That was absolutely Hot Shots. Yeah. Great. It is yeah. sort of fun. Perfect timing for it. Absolutely. It is. Yeah. It is. How about Jurassic Park Two? Is no. that a big hit? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like seven. I don't know. I was never into the first one. I not my cup of tea. I mean, once I see the dinosaurs, that's the big reveal for me. Okay, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can leave now. But this movie was interesting and exciting. Yeah, and smart. Top, yeah, and uh, emotionally involving. Top all gun. The way That's through. Yeah. And 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 not woke in any way. Right. Yeah. No. They they were really good. They were. Isn't that hey? Uh, real good writing. David Zucker is isn't that killing the business? I mean the the woke movies and TV shows are going down the tubes. I, I don't know I don't watch them I, I really I don't watch much TV yeah movies? yeah but mo yeah. but movies what what is I, woke Ronnie I don't know what it, you're talking about woke yeah. movies what are they those those are movies yeah. that uh, are L G B T Q E I E I O and on this one there was an L L G B T Q O oh, oh like what what what, <laughs> what is a good example of a woke movie yeah uh, uh, well oh God uh, the uh, Ghostbusters oh, yeah. with the chicks uh -huh. and oh did Matt Matt are you a what are you a dinosaur a caveman did you say chicks yes i also say broads <laughs> or i'm just a caveman I do. I mean, and i'm I not <laughs> and i'm not putting down females by saying broads or chicks no and frank sinatra in my right. opinion was not, broads. was not putting down females if you're a broad such as the great shirley jones and I love the great Shirley Jones. I toured with her and Jack Cassidy for 14 weeks. I bet you did, Ronnie. Around the United States. Did you date Jack Cassidy? No, Listen. but I could have. Oh. No, I couldn't. No, he was straight, but the, a very funny man. The deal The deal is that a Shirley Jones yeah. loved and adored being called a bride. She said it right here on the air with you. Yes, because, yeah. because she is one of the guys or one of the gals, but it's this... How sick and tired, David Zucker, are you of people being offended by everything and anything? Isn't this driving you nuts? No, I'm getting used to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you yeah. are? And, you, know, you almost have no choice. All those, the language stuff does change with time. Yeah. So, you know, it's like... Yeah, Remember, I, I almost got in a fight with her last husband. Woman broad anymore. I just, he does. I do. Does. I do. Well, I almost got in a fight friends. with her last husband on this show. Ronnie, you're going to have the rest of the show to speak. to speak. We only have a few more minutes All with right, David I'm sorry. Zucker. I'm so embarrassed. No, no, no apologies. I'm and, really embarrassed. And I know you're not embarrassed. When I said, you still call the chicks broad, he goes, that's why we're not friends. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> man. Listen. Listen, okay. man, <laughs> you're welcome, to David. the brother to throw you right under the bus. <laughs> I need, yeah. I need, yeah, tell Matt that I've enjoyed being on the program. David has enjoyed yeah. being and, here. I, and that I have to go. He's yeah. got to go now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you, could not, you could not make an airplane today, could you? Well, uh, sure we could, just without the jokes. Hey, come on. <laughs> did, did you, come on, did you see that? Did you smell that coming? I've, but But it's true. It's true. <laughs> yeah, time. No, why, why is it true? It held up to last no, week. No, not you, anymore. You couldn't get away with well, it. Well, in a sense of you're right, Ronnie. It 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 holds up it for holds the up. audiences, and we right. show it yeah. for, to audiences, you know, contemporarily. Yeah, right. But it's the studio boardrooms which would never be able to uh, green light right. something never. like that. Yeah, there would be. Yeah, the question, because the question is why. Well, well, because of all the woke funny. stuff. I mean, it's, I think people are are very afraid. sensitive, well, I think yeah. sensitive, overly, overly sensitive, sensitive. But I think the pendulum will will swing back. I think it's slowly swinging yeah. back with okay. with movies such as Top Gun and right. those that that make money. Uh, Priscilla Presley. Wait, okay, what was it? On the top of the refrigerator with the cheese? Yeah, that's a, that's a Wisconsin joke. That's uh, a great <laughs> bit, because it's sort of it's a non sequitur that just stands on its mm -hmm. own, and the cheese just sort of you know what's just the sort joke? Of walks what, away. Is that what she's putting up the? Oh, you mean the nice beaver joke? Yeah, that's the beaver one, joke. That's, that's one of the classics oh, yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> nice beaver. And by the way, <laughs> if you don't, you know, if you don't think a young guy such as myself watching that movie and and that lovely woman, <laughs> I thought about that after the movie. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh hell yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you, David. Uh, Ronnie, you're welcome. Uh, Priscilla is Tell looking in the refrigerator. Yeah. Listen to this. Puts the plate of cheese on top of the fridge. Right. Uh -huh. And the scene continues. 
issues. Right. And it's right. off site. Right. You you just start to see the cheese walk away. Yeah, you see oh, in the is background. That right? I didn't it's I don't in the remember background. That. A lot of people, yeah. if, you, if you see the movie enough times, you can get all the jokes. That's funny. And, and that, but, but hey, that's the thing with Airplane, Robert. And you, you sort of mentioned that earlier that you, you need to see the movie a myriad times in order to get everything in that movie airplane. Yeah, you're right. He's right. I mean, it's yeah. the, just the stuff, the visual stuff. Yeah. It's like, oh, I didn't catch that before. Yeah. It's like, how many times have I seen it? And I'm still watching it. But yeah. I, I don't recommend Airplane 2, David, and I want to go on record. <laughs> yeah, I, that's yeah. like, let's get that established. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, it's very important that you know that. <laughs> so, wait, was it your idea to put the Jaws uh, theme in the very beginning of your theme music in the opening of the movie? It may have been. Yeah, <laughs> we, we don't remember. We honestly don't remember. I like the plane we, crashing we, in the... Yeah. No, in no, plane. that's, that's the airplane plane two. in the plane. That's an airplane what? two. That's two. Huh? Remember that's that? airplane two. Uh, okay. But I don't remember. It's like it's you remember a, that. It's Forty years ago. The so. plane was crashing. No, no, that's and airplane. Everybody oh, sitting it. in the plane is looking at it. <laughs> no, that's an airplane one. Uh, that's an oh, airplane one. that's airplane one. It's a movie that's, within a movie. Oh, that's right. That oh, that one. Good. Yes. Yeah. Barbara Billingsley looking at the the yeah. flight movie. Yes. Yeah. How how cool? And by the way, Barbara Billingsley, that was a broad, sweet lady, right? Great gal. Very sweet lady. Yeah. Yeah. Really nice lady. Is there one standout celebrity movie star in that movie? Okay, now Robert Hayes is on the phone, so that's tough. But but he was, you put him on the map. I mean, frankly, with this movie, you put you made Bobby Hayes a movie star. Right, but apart from Hayes, I think uh, uh, who who was the guy? The uh, Howard Jarvis. Yeah. Uh, oh, the control team. center. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stand out celebrity. Scene. That was a cute scene, too. <laughs> yeah. In the taxi, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. You're, you're talking oh. about it in the beginning. Yeah, he was sitting in the taxi. Yeah, I'm telling oh, oh, I, mean, right. I mean, we could talk about this movie forever, but naked, the naked gun's still available. Yes. Do you still, I mean, when someone rents that, you still get a piece of that, right, David? Yeah, we do. Yeah. So you should rent those at your earliest convenience. Yes, Did you do all of the naked guns? Uh, yes, all the naked guns. How many? Three? All two. Three. Okay, now David. Three okay, yes. Robert. I got a question. Okay, I know all the state capitals. <laughs> <laughs> you really? guys created airplane, so therefore you must have had some kind of thought of participation on airplane too, because you created airplane. No, I don't think we did. Our oh deal did not. Really? Yeah. Wow. Robert just doubled down. No, but no, no, fact, no, no, but it's fact, a great question. But in fact, it is a good question because, in fact, Bob, we actually make l less money because of Airplane 2 because what they do is package it oh. with Airplane 1, oh. in a, and then mm -hmm. they, can, they can steal more money from us. The, but the studio... Who's your uh, agent? My, my agent can't... They can't do anything about it. It's the lawyers. No, I know. Who, was the, who did that deal for you? Oh, that was... I mean, we had the worst deal. But it's like we had the... We, we were insisting on directing the movie, so we were going to take anything. Yeah. In our contract is that Howard Koch had to be the executive producer. We had to take him, and we could be fired after two weeks. Wow. wow. So wow. Our, our producer scheduled as the first day's shooting... Uh, I am serious, and don't call me Shirley. That, <laughs> that gag. Mm -hmm. And so it played in dailies, and everybody cracked up. And Jeff Katzenberg called from the studio and said, don't worry, you guys are, you're not going to be fired. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah, it was nice. Still, still yeah. no regrets, though. I mean, no regrets. <laughs> no, 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 no regrets about that. Yeah, no. yeah the star, star of Malta. I mean, what can you tell me about it? Well, it's a uh, film noir. And so that's that's the the current my current project. I don't know that one. It's don't know actually mean. financed, and we're working on the casting now. Is it is it uh, even though it's a film noir? Is it uh, comedic? Is it's, yeah, total comedy. Yeah, believe me, uh, all the way through. Is I mean, it? Will it be black and white? Uh, it will be shot in color, and then on you know, some screens we'll we'll be able to do it in black and white cool. the way it should be. Yeah. Seen. Yeah. And Matt, I just want to say one thing: brain brain donors. Brain donors, yes. Brain donors. It, it, it's a movie my son said, David, 
uh, had a part of this movie, and it's yeah. called Brain Donors, and it's a very underground kind of movie. It's a, right. a cult type movie. Yeah. But it's great. Because we're such fans of the Marx Brothers. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. Matt, if you haven't seen a Brain Donors, man, I'm telling you. It's there, there's worth another. A watch. There's another example of the movies don't necessarily have to form a movie, and the plot is in, insignificant, but the bits in the movie are so freaking funny, and that is the Marx Brothers. The yeah, Marx Brothers are great, and they. They only did a couple of really good movies. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and, and Night at the Opera was the yeah. the ultimate Marx Brothers movie. One. Yeah. Uh, and 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 so this is a. Uh, I don't want to say it's a spoof or a parody. It's right. You can't spoof a spoof, but uh, it's after the Marx Brothers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. You can see that now. Uh, and, and by the way, uh, the opera one much better than two. Much, much better. <laughs> oh, good. Than okay, two. you're starting to get on the right track. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're now, now, da David Zucker, no friggin' uh, dip ass lefty. I appreciate you because you're a pragmatist. I am a pragmatist. I I may have been a Democrat back in the days of JFK. Uh, that party is now gone, and we we discussed this earlier, and the fact that you know you have you it seems to me David Zucker you have no regrets about coming out and being honest in your political beliefs because you don't look at that as a nasty thing. I I, I believe you simply love the United States of America. That is true. And and being that you love the good old USA, there's no way you could be on the left. Do you or do you not agree, Your Honor? Yes. Okay. 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 <laughs> he said he has any laugh. Other than that, no comment. <laughs> okay. All right. Can, can you tell Matt to stop yeah, asking yeah, Matt, these questions? Matt, we like but, to... <laughs> but dig, dig, dig this as we go into a time machine back in the 60s, and I say dig this. Um... <laughs> Although the man is certainly not on the left, you are an advocate of uh, solar-powered and electric cars. And trees. I'm, I'm, I've and been a, a board member for th 30 years for tree people. Well, I'm a yeah. big fan of I'm trees. I'm a big environmentalist, yes. Yeah. So that, but don't you see that as sort of uh, uh, polarizing and, and a, a magnetic in the opposite direction, being on the right, and or is there a happy medium? That's right. I'm a right-wing environmentalist. <laughs> I have no friends. I'm a member of the American Federation for uh, for the prevention of cruelty to animals. Just thought I'd throw that All in. right, Ronnie. Well, you know what? I'm not a big fan of cruelty to any animal whatsoever. Any any animal. And I never e I never even hit a tree because I appreciate I'm a big fan of I trees. I love trees. And the forest, especially pinion pines. That's my favorite. Yeah. Very my good. my favorite. What, you're a fan Isn't of a pinion? Good one? I love yeah, this scent. Good. I love the scent of a pinion pine. Uh, Does my heart good. David Zucker, even though you live in Los Angeles, Oh, I was just going to ask David Zucker if if he could live anywhere where we he can live anywhere. <laughs> yeah. So what a stupid question. You know, he can live anywhere he wants. So I guess you I guess you're living here. It's you, Brentwood. Yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah, but you probably have homes in other parts of the country. I, I used to. How about Wisconsin? Do you still have a house in Wisconsin? No. No. I don't have. I just have my one one home in Brentwood. That's it. See, you're you're not one of these highfalutin Hollywood types, and and Matt, you haven't seen his private jet. Well, there is that. But <laughs> you, <laughs> you said you weren't going to mention that. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, David. Yeah. Piloted by uh, Captain Stryker. <laughs> yeah. But but yeah. you but I believe it's because you you are sort of a a, a simplistic guy, obviously an intelligent guy, but you're a simple guy who has a happy day damn near every day, and you don't need the, the palatial mansion, although your place is gorgeous. Yeah, I don't. Need it. You don't need several homes like a Johnny Depp, right? right? Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Or an insane. Do you girl. have any diseases <laughs> you're insane, worried about? Or an, or an insane girlfriend? <laughs> no, I'm Hold wondering on. about that. Roddy, Roddy. By the way, you, my friend, are out of friggin' line. You don't ask a David Zucker. Do, are there diseases you're? Do you have diseases that you're sort of afraid of? 
You know, any diseases? Do I have personally have a disease? Well, you what have one. Ronnie no, has. I, I don't. Oh, do you have a disease? No. Is that what I, you're I asking? No. Yeah, I was I'm asking if he had a disease. Than, then than he than wouldn't me. be so happy. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> my my reflux is manageable. <laughs> 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 little Tums, right? Okay, okay. Yeah, little Tums. That's you know, no prescriptions. Yeah. Now I don't know how sensitive this is, but I I know that you, as the beautiful listener to Magic Matt's Outlaw Radio on YouTube, will find this interesting. But because I, I love this man so much, this David Zucker, I, I love him and appreciate him and respect him so much. L let me uh, let me ask you if it's OK if if I may talk about your living arrangement uh -oh. or is that too personal? No, nothing's it's, too personal. Oh, but my, yeah. OK, my, this my erectile this is cool. dysfunction. No, uh, no, 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 <laughs> no. That I would never talk about. That's not even a disease. No, 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 not really. But it's cured by Tums. <laughs> yes, Tums, it is. Like, is. And Viagra. <laughs> and, and on occasion, tongue. That's just taking a break. <laughs> How about uh, have you ever had a urinary oh, crack? Thing? Now we're getting personal. <laughs> Yeah. That's too personal. That's Ronnie's show. Well, that's, I'm, I'm wondering. He's a comedian. How legend. can you be happy if you've had a <laughs> urinary tract infection? You okay. can't be. Okay. Here's where I'm going, There's and you, you know come. where I'm going on this. Sure. It, your, your living arrangements, David Zucker, I find quite interesting because I don't speak to my ex-wife. You just can't I, let him go. I have, I have a beautiful daughter. I love my daughter dearly. <laughs> Uh, I learned what love was when my daughter came into being. But your living arrangement I find fascinating, if you don't mind sharing it no, with all well, of us. I was, yeah, I was just saying, I, I live with my uh, ex-girlfriend and, uh, and, and the current boyfriend of my ex-wife, who's, uh, she's 54, he's 29. There you go. And he's the bass player for a rock group, which I love. Right. And, uh, and the singer for the band, uh, Carl lives in my treehouse. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah. So and so my ex-wife is over all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, can you mention uh, the name of the band? We, it's a happy what? The name of the band? Can you? Yeah. Let's it's take a hot crazy. Okay. Oh. Okay. They, they're just. Uh, they have a song out called uh, "Manly in Heels." All right. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. 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 And oh, they have. They, have they, they, all, they, they do all the original of songs. Hot crazy, Robert crazy. Hayes. Hot. It's called Hot Crazy. You you don't find this odd at all, or yes, you, I do. But I, it's, yeah. so what? Yeah, it's okay. odd that I'm a Republican. Yeah, that, that's true as well. But do, do you ever get jealous? Is there some jealousy there in this living situation with an ex girlfriend in your house and an ex wife? No, no, I have my own girlfriend. <laughs> who also comes to the house? Yeah, <laughs> and Matt, Matt, and Matt. Hey, Mark, chill. <laughs> and all of you get along. Yeah, we all get along. <clears throat> Man, I it's, love that. We think. We, yeah, there's nothing honest wrong to God, that. we think nothing of it. <sighs> I, I, I've well, been married to the same woman for 52 years. Yes, yes, I know, because when I first met Ronnie Shell, I was living in the hills of Encino. Yes. Remember when I used to have money? Oh, those were yeah, the days. I do. Yeah, And you tried to pawn off your wife into interior decorating. She's a, she my, was a great one. My new house in the Encino Hills. Who do you think Rick, did Rick T's house? Well, it's uh, Rick D's, and God bless you for even bringing that up. My lovely wife. <laughs> Here's Madonna on the top 40. All right. The the thing is, I I I don't I don't give much credence to interior decorators. Oh, I, you're wrong. I just how about did, did you hire an interior decorator? Yes, uh, and you did. Yeah, even though I hate gay people. <laughs> Did you say that? What, did I say something wrong? I, I don't know. Dude. We'll send you the tape. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Not, I'm staying out of that yeah. one. Right. All right. Me okay. too. Okay, listen, listen. I, I think... Uh, <laughs> I get the... Hey, Lori, is your mic not working? Yeah, it's kind of funky today. No, yeah, it, yeah, is, it is working. The last couple minutes here with the great David Zucker, I'm yeah. sure you want to chime in. And how, how about this relationship of his in Brentwood with a myriad of uh, past relationships? living with him I think it's great I think that he worked it out and and that it's good for him and it's mm -hmm. good for everybody I th I think it's um I'm jealous I mean I, I would love why would to you be jealous I, because I would love to have my ex-wife here but I don't like her 
Well, maybe one day. Well, it, it isn't like that in every situation. So right. In this situation, we it just my works. My ex-wife and I still have our family. We have two kids in college. Yeah. And we all get along great. Right. Can yeah, you build another? Can, can you build awesome. another treehouse for me? Uh, well, I I do want to build another treehouse. Okay, yeah, thank but you. Just I not for you. Oh yeah. damn! Yeah. Damn! Yeah. But yeah. I want to have for one for myself. <laughs> yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been. Honest to God and esteemed pleasure having this man in the Lighten Up Lounge, an 1876 Virginia City, Nevada style bar. A nice boy from Wisconsin in a dive bar here in the Valley of the San Fernando in Southern California. Thank you. I know you'll never be here again, so we, we <laughs> I think we squeezed every ounce of you out of you for our audience and Outlaw Radio, and thank you. Sure, it's my pleasure. Yeah, okay. God bless him. God bless David Zucker. We'll be this after back on Outlaw. Okay, I gotta, I gotta roll. Gang, you're listening to OutlawRadioLive.com. Don't go away. We have great stuff coming up with the great Ronnie Shell. Ronnie Shell, folks. OutlawRadioLive.com. We'll be right back after this.
Passive Aggressive has a new home. You're listening to Outlaw Radio with Magic Matt Allen. I, I shouldn't feel bad, but now, now I feel bad. I thank everyone but Robert Hayes. I know. Captain Stryker, my buddy of a gazillion years, Robert Hayes, in that last segment, who was on with uh, David... Uh, Zucker. Zucker. And son of a bitch, I forgot to thank Robert. Wow. So, so I'm a user. I'm a Hollywood user <laughs> using Robert Hayes to get to David Zucker. Yes, you, you are. You, keep, you continue to shoot yourself in the foot. I don't know why. Well, because he likes to crawl. <laughs> I, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Well, this walking thing hurts me ever since I had that thing in my right foot. Oh, boy. Yeah. Hey, welcome back to the uh, big, voracious dog of broad chasing. You know I meant to say casting. OutlawRadioLive.com and on YouTube at Magic Matt's Outlaw Radio. And the thing I forget to uh, to ask of you, subscribe to our friggin' channel. How difficult can it be? Don't you just push a button? Smash it, man. Yeah, just smash the subscribe button, would you? Yeah. You know, I think we're up to like two subscribers now, but we want at least four by <laughs> By the Two. end of the day. Two? By the, <laughs> Let's we, go, Greg. We have more than that, right? Yeah. Roddy Shell, we have more than that. Yeah, we have more than that. Hey, hey, Lori, get his theme song ready, if you would. Lori Daddy Jr., our producer. It's not my theme song. Oh, it's uh, your Just theme song. Just one of song. the many it's, hits that I was in. Yeah, uh, You were in a ton of TV shows. Yes. And this is... Uh, this is the biggie, in my opinion. I well, mean, because it's still on every night on Me TV at night. Yeah, o'clock. well, not only that, but it, you know, you'll find this on YouTube. You'll find yeah. it everywhere. Yeah. All right, here we go. Six guest sauce on Johnny Carson. <laughs> How many Zucker did he do? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how, how many, many guest shots did? on Johnny Carson? I don't, I don't know if David Zucker was ever on the Carson show. Of course not. See? <laughs> <laughs> A little louder, Lori. <laughs> I, I like to dance to this. Yeah, da, 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 da. I can't he hear any of this. There he is. That's Roddy Shell, uh, huh. a.k.a. Duke. Duke. Duke and Gomer Pyle. Duke Slater. Does that seem like yesterday for yeah. Ronnie Shell? It's another, it's another, when I watch it. It's another guy you're watching. It's another guy, yeah, it is. Yeah, because you are, you're 90 years old. I say, yeah. <laughs> and what does that mean exactly? And gr- I say that, uh, and I mean this sincerely before yeah. we get into hearty hilarity. Yes. Once you hit 85, it's over. Oh. You start, you start. You start dying slowly. Wow, I said, hey, Ronnie, I said that about 50 when I turned 50. No, no, it's 85. I was just thinking the same thing. I, God, I hope I have that long before I start. <laughs> yeah, Dave, I mean, I'm telling you, 50 hit me like things started hurting. It was 20. You know, you have not, arthritis? Yeah, no, I don't have arthritis. Well, I do, okay? Yeah, well, you're 90. All right. But you're 90. It's one of the things that happens after you're 85. You get arthritis. So the last five years has not been good for no. Ronnie Shell? No. Well, I, I haven't had any serious diseases, but I... Who's that? I, 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 but but uh, I, I worry about it. I, I thought you had a urinary tract infection. Oh, I had two ur- urinary tract yeah. infections. <laughs> the only thing that bothered me was the catheter. Is that... Yeah, well, that, that hurts, that's right? Painful. Oh, God. Yeah, that's, that's a painful thing. And I'd rather have the disease. You know, when I think of Ronnie Shell, I, yeah. and, and I think about your stage performances... I think of a magical evening. That, that's what I think of. I think of Ronnie Shell on stage as being a magical evening with this man, especially at uh, a clubhouse yeah. mm-hmm. in Ohio. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. And, and you will be there, and for only $10 plus 7 $15. Now, according to this, it's seventeen dollars. Which one? There's two. Oh. Remember, I work this Saturday night. Yeah. And then Sunday night we have another concert. Hold on, where is this, man? You're, what's your? Do you know you're ninety? You. Yeah. You, you should still be doing this. I may. Get, I may not get back to here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because flights can't be fun for you. I hate it. Yeah. Yeah, but it's t- it's. T- I'll tell you what. Your arms would get tired. <laughs> 
<laughs> Ronnie showed me that when I when I first came in the green room. Ronnie showed me those flyers. He said that'll be fifteen dollars. Yeah, of saying, course, Ronnie. Uh, an evening with Ronnie Shell. This is his first gig. Saturday, June twenty fifth, six p.m. at Fairfield Community Arts Center. That's in uh, Cincinnati. Cincinnati. And by the way, those, those tickets are seventeen dollars. Actor and comedian recalls his 60-year career in show business, including his role on Gomer Pyle, USMC, and the Andy Griffith Show. Huh. 50 years in Vegas. Yeah, in Vegas. Oh, yeah, 50 yeah. 50 years. You would also, uh, on occasion, would you not, you'd work uh, Harris in Reno? Uh, all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Part of the 50 years. Yeah, you've, you've been. <laughs> I throw that in. Yeah. I don't know why you say it's $15 when it's $17. <laughs> so let's clarify this. <laughs> But I'll tell you what, se- I don't 17, care. if it were 117, to spend some time with this comedic legend, Ronnie Shell, Tattoo Dave, you're not into showbiz much, but you rec- you know who Ronnie Shell is, right? Of course, of course. <laughs> Does it sort of do your heart good that at 90 years old, he's still d- chucking down wine? Yeah, absolutely. And smoking stogies? Yeah, absolutely. Night isn't over. Matt, <laughs> Matt, how about the uh, strongest man in the world? I believe that was what it was called, the movie. I saw, I you and I, I saw that with... Kurt, Kurt Russell. Yeah, with no, I saw it with Kurt Russell. We were sitting together. Yeah. Well, I, I played the uh, the coach. The coach. Yeah. 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 And that, and I also did a whole series of thirty six episodes uh, with his uh, lover, uh, Goldie Hawn. Goldie Hawn. By the way, you didn't just do episodes with it, didn't you? Um, <clears throat> I don't want to. Hey, I don't want to talk. Yeah. Not here, right here. No names. Goldie. Goldie. You do the math. Goldie Hawn. <laughs> when, I love her. When she was extraordinarily oh. young. Oh. And I, I gotta tell you, a incredibly short, hot. I gotta tell you a short true story. Yeah. I think you find might find this amusing. Well, go ahead, Ronnie. <laughs> yeah. I had just finished my third year on Gomer Pyle playing the part of Duke, and I had a chance to do my own series called Good Morning World. Right. And uh, and I said, of course. And I said, so long, Jim. I'm going on to start yeah. on my own. What did, what did Jim Aww. Neighbors say to you when you, you... So you left the show. I left the show. I said You goodbye. left the show for your own sitcom. Yes, and I said, goodbye, Jim. I'll be a star from now on. And how was Jim... <laughs> how did Jim Neighbors take hurt. that? He was hurt. He was a good guy. By the way... He was... Was he pissed off about it? Hurt. Not... Not but 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 you were an integral part of Gomer Pyle. Yes, I was. So You'll without you, he may be thinking this: the magic is gone, yeah. and now you're taking money yeah. out of my friggin' pocket. Yeah, that's what he thought. Where is? Yeah, God. right. I'll beat the shit out of him if he was still around. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'll be very, I'll be very honest with you. Well, I know I you are. My son, who's sitting here next yes, to you. Yes, yes, the great Greg. Talk. Yes. Uh, I. I have met only two people in my entire life, off stage and on, who had absolutely no enemies. Right. One was my wa- is my wife. Yeah. And the other one is Jim Neighbors. Yeah, I hear he that. Never had an enemy. I- Not even Rock Hudson. Not even Rock Hudson. No, I, I hear that Jim Neighbors was one of the great guys of all time. He was. Was, he was a sweetheart. I miss him. Every yeah, day. I seriously. know you do. I know yeah. I know he was your buddy. So Good Morning World. Yeah, but then you went on to Good Morning World. Well, what World. happened was... That uh, lasted about half an hour, didn't it? Uh, th- uh, 34 episodes. 30? Wow. Did they all air? Yes. Are you certain? Yes. Okay. What happened was... Lori, we I wish were, you could we, figure out I which fish? mic that is. Can Somebody's yeah. jiggling. No, Defense? no one's jiggling. It's simply a microphone that should be brought down. Please, Ronnie. This is the defense of, of Good Morning World. We uh-huh. were opposite Tuesday night at the movies on NBC. Right. When NBC was first starting first run movies. Right. So every Friday or Tuesday, I don't know, uh, everybody in America would say, who should we watch tonight, Ronnie Schell or Cary Grant? Yeah. Guess who won? Yeah, Ronnie and Schell. So we no, never got Ronnie to the ratings, Schell. and then they canceled us after the first do, year. Do you notice that everyone in Hollywood, everyone in showbiz, Ronnie yeah. Schell, has an excuse for why their series didn't last? And this has nothing to do with what you just said. Well, uh, <laughs> it, it's, a, it's, it's just a relative. Little. It's relative. Yeah. Uh, so who's your co-star in that? Uh, Joby Baker. Well, I thought Goldie Hawn was in that. Uh, well, what happened was okay. uh, they were looking for a girl to play my girlfriend. And there's this little girl, uh, a go-go dancer out of Baltimore. Yeah, I loved her. And she was hired to be a dancer on an Andy Griffith special. 
and she was had such a parking, sparking personality yeah. as they said, let's use your, her as your girlfriend. And I said, okay. So after about three weeks of rehearsing, and I, we, in that time, I wasn't married, uh-huh. and we rehearsed in my, in my apartment. All right. You uh, do the math? You do the math. Okay. <laughs> oh, I yeah. did the uh-huh. report, didn't I? Mm-hmm. And uh, after three weeks, she would not like to rehearse because she, she said it makes you stale. And I said, look, Goldie. I've been in this business four years. <laughs> right. I am a star. <laughs> and I'm a star because I rehearse. Uh-huh. And you don't. Mm-hmm. And you're not going to make it. Oh. I, I love you, but you're not going to make it. Wow. <laughs> One year later, she won the Academy Award for Cactus Flower. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I found out while working some toilet in Omaha, Nebraska. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and she never let me forget it. Oh, yeah. And then I got to know... Uh, her husband, uh, her, they Kurt, never did marry, did they? Kurt Russell. They're not married. No, yeah. they're not married. Yeah. Uh, and, and when I played uh, in the Disney film, I did 60 fi- Disney films, okay? And uh, I always thought Kurt Russell was a, he seems like a real nice guy. One of the nicest yeah. guys I ever met. Of course he is because he's not a big lefty boob. That's why. You heard me, Ronnie. Oh, come on. He's not a big lefty boob. We're going to get into that someday. Well, no, we, <laughs> we may get we may get in that d- today. Yeah, I got not nothing. Not? I, got, I have no problem with liberals, classic liberals. Thank you. I have every problem with lefty pieces of crap, woke dip asses well, who, who anything you say to them or look at them the wrong way, I, they are offended. Way. I'm not that way. Of I'm, course you're but not. But you cannot tell me what? that you think... Donald Trump is an honest, good guy. Absolutely one of the greatest presidents who has ever served for the United States of you America. You are kidding. I second that. Absolutely yeah. not you are kidding. kidding. No. No. I How, wait, wait, no, wait a second. How can you say you are kidding when the proof is right there? Where are we now? This is where five were, losers right here. Where were we if for four years of Donald Trump? I don't vote for a guy because he's a he's a Mr. Nice Guy. I vote for the person who will do the best thing for the citizens, black, white, Asian, s- skin color. And who can turn the, on you at any moment. Give me an example of that. Uh, uh, his vice president. That's not him. That's not... No, no, no. He's what do you talking mean, his about, He's talking about turning on his vice president. Oh. He did, turned on his vice president. Did I say that Donald Trump is not a loud mouth son of a bitch? Of yes, he is. I didn't say... Oh, oh. Okay. I did. He is, yes, yes. But he was our loud mouth son of a bitch. He got things done yes, for Americans. Oh. That's Are you March telling Ma- me that I know Ma- it's March Mike. Yes, it is. You're yeah. telling me that Biden doesn't get anything done? Oh, yes. Oh, he gets a lot done. <laughs> he stopped the pipeline, and that's why we're paying $7 a friggin' gallon in California for gas. That's because he has no help from the Republicans. Oh, my God. How would the Republicans help him? They hate him. Wait, wait just a second. The Republicans... For the pipeline, (coughs) Biden against the pipeline. Biden said no pipeline. Instantly, gas prices began going through the roof. By the way, having nothing to do with Russia or the Ukraine whatsoever. Well, I agree with you. Absolutely. See that? Biden was a prick. See See, See, I'm willing to to admit that there are faults with everybody. A middle ground. I love that. You're going to hit me with Kamala Harris in about 10 minutes. Oh, no, no, less than that. Ronnie Shell on Outlaw Radio. Huh?
Jesus Christ! Calling. On the Culver City lot? Is that where you're at? Yes. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. One, two. That working, could, could, you, could you give me a status? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, but it's still blinking. I don't oh, hear it. I don't like the sound of that at I'm all. I'm not hearing it. Uh, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. No, it's not static. It's That's not static. Uh, no. You're not static. Are you not static? Right, no. One two 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 one two one two what okay when Laurie when you hear that happening just turn the mic down we're, we're not gonna get any better than it is right now one two one two one although Burl Burl uses this for a fucking hour and it's One two, one two. Hi there. Marty. Huh? Marty. Check one two, Lori. Check one two. Hello. by any other name are still bananas. And now there's a new game in town led by an hombre named Matt. A poker-playing, cigar-smoking, barbecue-eating talker. They call him magic in these parts. And he's made bananas a kind of art form. The kind of talking that makes people sit up and bark at the moon. Don't leave his face. Ordinary just got better. Outlaw Radio with Magic Matt Allen. Yeah, I meant to wear the blazer during the interview with a great man from Airplane One and completely forgot. Where is my fashion designer on this show? Hmm. We'll give you a credit. <laughs> I mean, and so now Ronnie Shell sparked interest in me being all dressed up because yes. he's a big time Hollywood celebrity. Yep. And I slap on the blazer for you. Thank you. You luscious, loyal audience to Magic Matt's Outlaw Radio on YouTube. And we're here for you, Should Ronnie. Should we have a cocktail after the show? I think we're having a cocktail now, are we not? Yes, we are. Yes. We're enjoying it. A beautiful red wine. Yeah, Lori beautiful Downey cigarette. Jr., our producer, said, said, you know, I, I don't know what sort of crappy uh, red that you picked up for Ronnie, but he's a snob. He's a he's a red wine snob. Yeah, I am. He knows the difference. I do know. And I said, I don't think he does. No, I do. Let me let me let me taste. <laughs> what? <laughs> Is this a good one? And so Lori has some good. Lori gave you I'm some. I'm sorry. Good, I'm what? sorry. I'm so embarrassed. Lori Downey Jr. Is that crap that you gave him or good stuff? It's no, crap. It's, it's not crap, Ronnie. No. No. What well, it has. A, it, <laughs> 
Do you want to see the crap that Matt had out for you? Oh, yeah, yeah. If it, it, listen, if there's it a has way, a wonderful vintage. If, there, if there's an opportunity to tear me down, Lori will be right there. Yeah, no, I thought oh, it was. Yeah. I thought it was. You yeah. missed out loud. It's, yeah. not, it's not even thinly veiled. So it's a good wine. It's a very good wine. Okay, Pro okay. Probably going. You check with my son. He's the expert on wine. Are you an expert? Yeah. Greg yeah. is an expert. Yes. Well, and on a, is it okay? It's a beautiful wine, yeah. Yeah. Sandra Valley, Sonoma. Okay, yeah. Sonoma. Very yeah, nice. didn't even know her. <laughs> All right, okay. Uh, but Ronnie Shell doesn't want to get into politics. And so something. Oh, I'll, I'll talk politics. <clears throat> okay, so we will. But this is, a, this is a quick break, but we'll really dive into it next hour with the great Ronnie Shell of Gomer Pyle USMC fame. Uh, but I forgot to play this last week. Lori, it's uh -oh. 385 and it's uh, Joy Beastar from The View and it says guns. It's 385. Yeah, it. Okay, I forgot to play this. Joy Beastar? This is, yeah, Joy B Beastar from, from, the view, the, yeah. from The View. She talked about me? Yeah, that, no, but go ahead. Oh, well, the hell with it. Yeah. <laughs> Most AR-15 owners are former military. Okay. 35 I can't hear military. Let me say one more thing. So that's all I'm saying. Okay. Is that they're yeah. not once, once, people. Okay. Here's the thing. Once black people get guns in this country, the gun laws will change. Trust me. What? Yes, Joy what? Beastar. Once black people get guns, how racist is that? The comment? gun, the, the, yeah, the gun people will change here in this country. What in the hell? Yeah. Wow, man. That's, is that what she that's said? Gonna cause her yeah, even that's more your us. that's your lefty idiots that I can't stand. Oh, well, wait minute, What did she who say? Who are the racists anyway? What did she anyway? say that was so offensive? By so the way, starring Ryan Styles. Who are the racists anyway? What did she say anyway? that was so offensive? Uh, we'll get into it next on OutlawRadioLive.com. This time's gotta stop. Enough is enough. I can't take this BS any longer. It's gone far enough. You wanna claim my soul? You'll have to come and break down this door. I knew that something was going on wrong when you started laying down the law. I can't move my hands. I break out in sweat. I wanna cry. I can't take it anymore. But this side's gotta stop. Enough is enough. I can't take this BS any longer. It's gone far enough. You wanna claim my soul? You'll have to come and break down this door. I've been around a long, long time. I've seen it all, and I'm used to being free. I know who I am. Try to do what's right. So lock me up and throw away the key. But this time's gotta stop. Enough is enough. I can't take this BS any longer. It's gone far enough. You wanna claim my soul? You'll have to come and break down this door.
You're listening to OutlawRadioLive.com. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back with the great Ronnie Shell and the Demons of Decadence. Here with Magic Matt on OutlawRadioLive.com. Have yourself a something, and we'll cheers to you. Guys, why don't you subscribe to Magic Matt Allen's? No, 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 no. Subscribe to Magic Matt YouTube. No, no. Magic Matt's Outlaw Radio Live YouTube. No, 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 no. This is annoying. How about Magic Matt's Outlaw Radio? Subscribe. Smash it. Be a part of us. That was like take 14. You know, we're the last line of defense, and really the comedians are the last uh, the voice of truth in this whole thing. Hi, this is Meatloaf. Okay, kids, you know what time it is? You know what time it is? It's Outlaw Radio time! Outlaw Radio for all of us. Outlaw Radio for all of us. This is Sean Young on Outlaw Radio. <laughs> hey, this is Shelley Berman on Outlaw Radio. Listen, come on, listen to me or listen to Matt. It, if you like being bored, it's great for you. <laughs> it's Robert Hayes. I'm here on Outlaw Radio with Magic Matt, a.k.a. 
We are here to drink. We're here to smoke. We're here to interrupt. You may drink. You may smoke. You may interrupt. But I'm here to f- Live from the Lighten Up Lounge, this is Don Delevingne saying, this is Outlaw Radio. Hi, this is Chuck Woolery at Lighten Up Lounge on Outlaw Radio. There's lots of fun, guys. Be back. Two and two. Hi, this is Gilbert Gottfried, and you're listening to Outlaw Radio, where we smoke, we drink, and occasionally we bother people who look old and weak. Hi, this is Rick Dees with Magic Matt, a.k.a. Mr. Cigar, in the Lighten Up Lounge. We drink, we smoke, we... Interrupt. Ronnie Shell, comedic legend, legendary Ronnie Shell. Hi. Hi Not fans. everyone that has a Ronnie Shell on their show, but it is me, Magic Matt, on Outlaw Radio. That's Magic Matt's Outlaw Radio on YouTube. And it is, uh, I just, I love this guy. I knew him when I thought Ronnie was old. <laughs> when I was, uh, I must have been tw- 26 years old, and I met Ronnie for the first time, and he was in his 50s. Yeah. Upper 50s. And you, and I was trying to get my wife to do <laughs> My your, interior uh, your decorating. House. Yeah, that worked well. Not X-rated. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. That was fun days. Uh, well, yeah. There's no such thing as the golden years. You know that. You're talking about it doesn't get better when you're 90. Exactly. Yeah. 85, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the cutoff. That's the that. cutoff. 85 is the cutoff. For me, it was 50. You know, it just, uh, that was it. Well, that could be. That was the last uh, day I had sex. That's not pretty bad. obvious. Da, 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 da. You, you like this song, right? Uh, it's one of the classics. I can't hear it. Yeah. How can you hear me, but you can't hear the music, Ronnie? Right. I can now. Happy Father's Day. Happy Thank you. Father's Day, the great Ronnie Shell. I'd like to introduce my son, who's now a very successful movie producer. Yeah, I've always been a fan of Greg's, and I'm starting to sound like Rick Dees now. You know, I'm just your biggest <laughs> fan, but I am. I've always loved the man because he's a good guy. He's a good boy. He is a good guy. He's a good boy. Thank good you guy. very much. And it's great to be back at the 18th. Wait a second. Wait, is that is that Ronnie talking? Yeah, or is no, that Greg show? Like yeah. They have the same voice. Is that yes, uh, thank I you know. very much. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I did go over pile. I, I, I can't answer the phone at home because then they start talking. Yeah, Ronnie, listen, I got to do this. Yeah. And I'm like, wait a minute, it's Greg. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it is great to be back at the 1876 Virginia City Nevada yeah. Bar Outlaw Radio Magic. Yeah, Bar. I love it. I love it. You hear that? See, yeah. am I hired? Am I hired? You're in. Okay. You're in. Yeah, Ronald. Okay, no, but thank you. Matt, Ronald. in the green room, when, when I first uh, uh, got to the show, Ronnie mentioned you and I, the old Yarmies Armies get together with all the old famous, you know, uh, Boy, this better actors. lead somewhere, yes. And he brought up the time at yeah. uh, Boca de Beppo City Walk, mm-hmm. where we got to meet and have pay- He's got pictures of us. Yes. With, uh, the Mickey great Rooney. Mickey Rooney. Right. And uh, uh, wow. so right. he was talking. Well, I'm waiting. I, I know, but, you know. No, there's no punchline to that, but. No. but I, yeah, I, I had a run. feeling. To, to, to tell you about, and, and this, uh, nobody will get this because it's it's a visual. Oh, good, Ronnie. But somebody uh, once introduced uh, himself yes. on the set. Right. To some movie that <laughs> Mickey was doing. He said, hi, Mr. Rooney. I'm, uh, I'm such and such, and I'm a big fan of yours. <laughs> and Mickey went. Oh, he did. Hey, Lori, did, that, did the camera catch that? I hope not. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. It's supposed to. It's visual. <laughs> so, did, okay. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, all right. If, if you want to know what Ronnie just did, you're going to have to watch yeah. it on YouTube. Magic yeah. Matt's Outlaw Radio I on YouTube. I was doing Mickey Rooney. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
The man born in, uh, wow, 1931, Ronnie. I know. The Great Depression, Ronnie. I know. I yeah. Know. Do you recall the Great Depression? Uh, I can recall the sort of the end of it because uh, I was uh, right in uh, the Bay Area, San Francisco, when uh, uh, we got out of the Depression by going to war. Mm-hmm. Remember? Yeah. Well, no. I mean, I heard, I read about it. Oh, bullshit. Yeah. But any, <laughs> we had. Uh, do I look that old? I know I'm not. Yeah, you do look that old, okay. and you act that old. Yeah. But I do. we had. Uh, uh, then, then all the shipyards came in, and everybody got rich. Remember? You know, we talk about we talk about the 1950s. As and the president was a Democrat. We we t- well, yeah, but back then, Demo- okay. Democrats would be Republicans it was today. Okay, yeah. They would no. be Republicans. You know why? No. Be- because they loved America. Even Democrats back then loved America. You say These, they don't love America anymore? No, absolutely not. Anymore. I not. love America. These Democrats don't love America. You need to festoon yourself away from this party. Can I say one thing? Because the party festooned their way away from you, Ronnie Well, let me tell you something. Yes, sir. You served, you did not serve in the military. I I did not. I did. Four years in the United States Air Force. I I know you did. Defending my country during the Korean outbreak. Bet your ass. God bless you, man. Thank you. I'm very proud. Thank you for your service. And I mean that from my heart. I almost made corporal. Yeah, but what happened? No, I, 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 when it was over, I, I went back and went to college and then went and went and fight. I didn't fight. Well, you, you started doing that thing of the hungry eye in San Francisco. Purple onion and then the hungry eye. Yeah, yeah. man, you were one of those sort of hippie yeah, I guys, was. right? I was. You Hint, know what the bill was? But hence your your sort of uh, uh, left leanings. Yes. You know. You, you know were, what the bill was when we first started? At who the who was on stage? Who who? Phyllis Diller. <gasps> oh wow. And the Kingston Trio. Wait, I'll be a son of a bitch. And I, I was the opening act. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah you, you, you was awesome. But yeah. you were also on an episode of You Bet Your Life with yeah. Groucho Marx. Groucho Marx. So That's why, before, before I even went to Vegas. You you did this uh, you did this comic now, but it wasn't on Groucho Marx. You did the uh, barrage of beatnik jive talk. That's not that wasn't when you did that. That was part of your act, right? Yeah. 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 It, it, hungry and eye. it was stolen by George Carlin, who I love dearly. It, is he, in your opinion, being one comedian to another who was up there in heaven, George Carlin? I loved him personally. Was he not top five greatest of all time? <laughs> well, it, it's according to what you think is funny. All right. Now, let me tell you the difference for me. Mm-hmm. I worked uh, two weeks on Mark and Mindy. And spent the whole time up in a balloon with uh, Robin Williams. Right. And he was a genius. Yeah. Real genius. Everything yeah. he said yeah. was hysterically even funny. Though th- even though there are some that say that he stole his entire act from Jonathan Winters. Well, he, Winters. he did steal a lot. But, All but, right. But, but he was very but funny. But yet, yet but, brilliant. But, here's yes. the peril. Peril, that's Spanish for butt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes. he did not. I thought that was Spanish for dog. <laughs> Is that dog? It is, it is also but. Oh, yeah. oh okay. It is he did, but I, I loved him, and I, I got to personally know him, but he never made me laugh. I say the same thing about George Carlin. He was a genius because mm-hmm. he was a good friend of mine, mm-hmm. but he never made me laugh. You know why? Mm. Because when he came out on stage, and when Robin came out on stage, they weren't funny until they said something. When Jack Benny walked out on stage, you, you laughed would, automatically. You would laugh. Do you see the difference? Yeah. And when Jonathan Winters walked out on stage, you knew he was crazy, you, so you laughed. You instantly That's laughed. the difference between a comic and a comedian to me. How? What, did you spend any time, when, when you were on the show, You Bet Your Life with yeah. Groucho Marx, did you spend any time with him off camera? Well, Groucho Marx. I could lie and say that I did, but I didn't. You didn't. But. Yeah. About a month later, I was doing a guest shot on the uh, Johnny Carson show. I think it was my third of six. And he... <laughs> yeah. True, 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 uh-huh. Look it up. Okay. And uh, he was in the audience. Hold on. Hold on. I, want, I want you to say this story. Uh, and I need some help from the crew here on Outlaw Radio, our okay. demons of decadence. Remember where he was, where Ronnie was at this point of the story, okay? Yeah. Because I'm going to go to Ronnie on the t- one of his Tonight Show appearances. Uh-huh. Lori, are you ready? This is this is Ronnie Shell on one of his six six starring Tonight Show appearances with Johnny Carson. Let's go, right. Laura. 
Uh, Ronnie Schell has just finished three very successful weeks at the Sahara Hotel in Las Vegas. He's starred on three major television series. And he's unique in the business because after all of the success, no one knows who he is. <laughs> so would you please welcome America's slowest rising young comedian, Ronnie Schell. Did you write that intro? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't it. Excellent. Excellent. I don't remember this. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Thank you. That's good. That's it's a pleasure, pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to be back on The Tonight Show. And um, the reason I'm back so soon is because Fred de Cordova, who is an old friend of mine from my uh, Bridge of St. Louis Ray days, uh, called me in uh, Las Vegas while I was there and asked me if I'd come back and fly to L.A. and do the show. And I said, well, I'd, I'd love to. However, you know, I'm a big smash up there, so I, I would like, uh, you know, for one night to fly into L.A., I'd like substantial increase in salary from the last time. I'd like $5,000 for the show. Well, he drew up a contract for less money, and I said, no less money, Fred. I want, I want $5,000. But I, uh, I went ahead and signed the contract, and here I am. I, I figured, why ruin a friendship over $4,900? <laughs> Come on! But, uh, but uh, no, the real reason I'm back is because Johnny appreciates a good comedian. He, no, he told me that the last time I was here. He said, Ronnie, watching your act makes me appreciate a good comedian. <laughs> Now, I, I, uh, I find that I am America's slowest rising young comedian, and there's reasons for it. I'm a supporting act, let's face it, just a little male starlet starting out in the biz. And uh, I think that supporting acts are vastly underpaid, because you must realize that when we're on the road, as I have been the past year, besides working Vegas as a supporting act, I, uh, well, we are underpaid where, where, well, just figure it. You're working with a big star, you go to a city, who gets the keys to the city? The big star. Who gets invited to all the society parties? The big star. That's true. The little supporting acts always left out, and we have to warm up the audience for the big star. Like I worked with Robert Goulet in Washington, D.C. last April. President Nixon invited Robert to sing at the White House, and he didn't invite me to do anything. I did tape my act for the president. I checked into the Watergate Hotel and read it into a lamp. Come on! <laughs> Come on! Huh? Topical? I had the, uh, the, uh, the other problem is that I'm never recognized in public, and I've been in big-time showbiz now five, six weeks, and <laughs> nobody ever knows me. That's Carson I laughing. At, uh, the Sahara with Jim Neighbors. We flew on the plane together back, and I was discussing this with him on the plane. I said, Jim, Jim, I can't understand it. <laughs> the reason I was hollering, Jim flies first class. <laughs> Back there, tourist. So, Jim, I can't understand. I'm in the business now. Twelve years, I've done three television series, been on, on, on commercials for about five years. Still, nobody knows my name. He said, oh, relax, Frank. <laughs> I see. I have another problem. Switch I've lived here in Hollywood for eight years. I've never done a movie. I never even had a part in a movie. But I have a good excuse there. You see, I, I won't do what a lot of these actors and actresses will do to, to get famous. You know, those publicity stunts to, to get their names and pictures in the paper. I, I won't do that. I won't cop out. So I'm so burned up at Burt Reynolds. <laughs> How come I don't have big parts like that? Not bad. Audience loves you. Loves you. You are funny. It's you Ronnie Shell on The Tonight Show yeah. with Johnny Carson. Yeah. Well, when I work, uh, and I don't work very often now, but I will be here this Saturday in... <laughs> yes, you will. In, uh, you will be at uh, the uh, Fairfield Community Arts Center. Yes. Uh, at, yes. Uh, in... Uh, yeah, Fairfield, uh, where is that? Ohio? Ohio? It's okay. in... Uh, Cincinnati. Uh, uh, what's it? City? Cincinnati? Cincinnati. All right. And my son, who's sitting right over here, yeah. will be the uh, MC. All right. And oh, he'll yeah. introduce me, and yep. uh, we're going to have a great time. And then on Sunday, you will be uh, where? the great Duke... Uh, from Gomer Pyle <laughs> will be a uh, 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 guest performance. Oh wait, no, you're you're the. You're the, the the act, but there's a guest performance by bluegrass band Baraka Valley. Well, Greg can tell you about that. He's a fan of theirs. Yeah, yeah. Great bluegrass band coming to uh, you know make sure the audience doesn't fall asleep. You know, we uh, need someone to play and uh, you know have a great. What are you saying? Your dad puts people to sleep? No, this is oh, before oh, I'm on. <laughs> we got to understand the second a, the second yeah. show is at a senior citizen center, so we don't uh, know. Oh, you didn't have to tell them that. Well. <laughs> Come on. Greg. You've never, you've never well, Ronnie Show, you've never been a, f a fan of the seniors, right? Never of the old people, ever. Uh, right? No. No. Until I got old myself. Yeah. And now I'm <laughs> a huge yeah. fan. A so huge do, fan, yeah. So do we remember where Ronnie left off with the yes. story? Yeah. He was talking Groucho Marx. Right. He's on a performance a, a month later. tonight show. Groucho's in the audience. Yes. Groucho's in the audience. And what happened? Back, 
backstage and said, Ronnie, you were very funny. Now, the reason this is amusing is because Groucho had a bad reputation for being nasty. Oh, no, like, not unlike Jerry Lewis, right? That sort of reputation? Well, I could tell you a Jerry Lewis story, too, but that's... We'll, we'll get into that in a second, right, please. Okay. And, uh, and he was so nice to me that uh, I've always been a fan of Groucho's. Wow. And, yeah, uh, well, accolades like that from a Groucho Marx, I mean, those don't the come... Best. Yeah, they don't come every day. That, no, they are, don't. Those are meaningful. But what good does it do me now? Absolutely nothing. Huh? Yeah. Well, you're 90. 90 years old. Nobody gives a shit. <laughs> yeah. So, did you make a note there, Lori? I got to yes. bleep that. Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> the, you know, Jerry Lewis called me one time, Lori, and Lori will find that one time that Jerry Lewis <laughs> called me, yeah. and it sounded a lot like this. It's under JL. I know. Uh, then, <laughs> dead air. It that wasn't Jerry, by the way. Jerry Lewis called me. Okay. That's it. Um, oh, that's it? That's it. Well, he never... Oh, he came on the show for a couple of seconds. Well, we, uh, we had, co we had no. conversations, and I, and I met him and talked to him uh, for a good 20 minutes. And I, I love the man because I grew up loving him. And so I would put up with a lot of crap, and he was a very intelligent guy. Very. Because Who was his mentor? We in, talked about that earlier. I'll get into that in a second, but okay. in his 90s, yeah. he figured it out. What? He was no longer on the left. He was a fan of Donald Trump. Didn't know Jerry that. Luke. Jerry Lewis. Jerry Lewis. I, I don't believe that, but... Uh, Honest to God truth. He, well, came, he came out and said it in one of his... Honest to God Is truth. Is that right? He yeah. figured it out because... because Jerry Lewis and I share this pragmatism in common. We don't tow a party line. I've never towed a party line. Neither have I. I like what's best. And I know that about you, Ronnie. Yeah. I like what's best for the United States of America, their citizens. That's what I appreciate. Me too. And $7 a gallon, when that is the intent of the White House, they want us off of fossil fuel. This is no mistake. They're doing this on purpose so we go electric. Okay. Even I though, what is a, how do you make a battery? What, how does a battery, it, yeah. you need what to make a battery? Fossil lot, fuel. Are you, I, fossil are you for, fuel. Are you, are you for fossil, fossil fuel? Absolutely, 100 percent. It's ruining yes. our country, my friend. No, How no. so? Yeah. Well, the lack thereof is ruining our country. Talk to our trucker friends. My buddy Steve Abbott in Wisconsin. Oh, I know Steve. Steve, <laughs> the great Steve Abbott in Wisconsin, sent me this piece on truckers uh -huh. and the fact that they are going through hell. They are at Ma and Pop. Uh, truck stops waiting for hours and days for gas. This is recently? He calls it the 72-hour rule wow. when it comes to wow. trucking, which is about the time it takes to go from the major cities, New York, L.A., and vice versa. Well, you know what I said to He that? said when that is disrupted, there are big problems a-brewing. In Steve Abbott from Wisconsin, his opinion, we are in for deep, deep S. When the truckers cannot get the goods from point A to B, we are in deep S. This goes back to Biden the first day in office cutting the pipeline. Absolutely. Period. Right. Dot com. What is, you know what Steve said to that? Steve Abbott, yes? He what? said, can you get me a shot on... Carson show? <laughs> is, that what, is that what Steve Abbott oh, said? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Now, you know what I say to all that? What? God bless Trump. Oh, boy. All right. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. You know, he's not a, he's not a likable guy. And, and here's the... Let me go on record once again as okay. saying, I hope he doesn't run for a second term. Why? I want my guy in Florida, Ron DeSantis, who is pure brilliance, oh. to... Oh, ho, ho, the what? The guy who rejects uh, what? Uh, COVID uh, what? Uh, stuff for kids? COVID is kids. the biggest... Scam a lama dig Come dong freaking flu. I, have you had it? Are you dead? 
Are you old? You know why I don't have? Uh, why I didn't die? Why is that? I was on COVID. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> true. You, you know, Matt gets COVID about three times. Yeah, a week. about two, three, three times, times, times a, a week. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I well, cough. you can thank that that uh, wonderful uh, what oh. uh, Donald Trump? Oh. No, you can thank uh, uh, what uh, 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 Biden? Saucy, Fossey. Oh, oh Fauci? He's got COVID, Fauci. too, now. Fauci? Thank him, too. He's got COVID, Wait, thank too. him for what, exactly? He's promoting the, the, the serum that gets rid of... Uh, you mean the serum that Trump doesn't uh, made sure got done faster than any other serum in the history of the then, United States? Then, then why did Trump uh, promote... Uh, what? Uh, 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 kerosene or something I'm here else. to answer your question. Okay. Do you know well, do you well, remember he's that? He's talking about yeah, that aquarium... I, no, I know whatever, what he's yeah. talking about. You're watching the wrong channels, Ronnie. Yeah. Well, what, what, you're watch, that wasn't him? You're watching the dumb no. channels. That no. wasn't him? It well, was lying. him. He was it joking. It was a statement made in <laughs> sarcasm. It was sarcasm. He was joking? It was sarcasm. It was sarcasm Shooting Clark's bleach in your blade. Of, of course it was. Come on, man. It's something you would say, Roddy, as a joke. <laughs> But, but because you're watching the CNNs and the MSNs and those idiot stick friggin' lying pieces of crap networks, you believe this. So you like that guy that comes on every Tucker night? Tucker Carlson? Yeah. I think the guy, by and large, is pretty brilliant. And I don't watch him. No, I don't even watch Fox. I watch clips of things that are sent me. But I, I'm not one of these these lockstep guys. I'm not a lockstep. I know you're not. So if, if, you, if something's bad, I say it. Yes. So how about our how about our economy right now in the United it's States? It's bad. It's well even worse than when Jimmy bad President Carter was in office, and now Jimmy is doing high fives with Barack Obama yep. because they're <laughs> they're happy guys. Hey, we're no longer the worst presidents. We're no longer the worst. You know, I don't think I can win here. <laughs> no, it's not about winning. It's not. I will not change the minds of someone who for ninety years has been. Been a Democrat. My my beloved uncle, Uncle Dick in Northern Nevada, I love him dearly. He loves his guns. He loves his personal freedom. He loves the United States of America. Have you ever guessed it but on the yet Tonight Show? He votes for Democrats and he can't stand Donald Trump. Go figure. Well, I'm not that guy. You put a Democrat in there that has his act together, his or her act together. I don't want a female president, by the way. Lori, do you? No, I don't. No. But I do have a question for Ronnie. Yeah, Go ahead, quick, Ronnie. Quick. Okay. So you live in Southern California. Yes, I do, and I'm proud of it. <laughs> and the cr you are? I'm not. Why? I'll tell you that because I... Well, it, well, he's proud because it's Pride Month. Tell me why you... It is Pride Month. Okay. Okay, go ahead. But the crime has gotten out of control. Yes, it has. In the state. Mm -hmm. so That's you... because of that uh, Gaston. Who is a, the big lefty of the left. Yes. Left, left people look at They're him. They're not all say, good. Did you say Gascon? Yeah. Gascon. Oh, my. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, I'm not a Gascon fan. No. no. Then you should understand that voting Democrat is the wrong thing to do. They're the ones who don't protect our police. They're the ones who have tried to dissuade the police from doing their jobs. Mark. Gascon let the guy out of jail that yes. just killed the two cops. Because the he's That's a bad, saying. bad guy. He's an idiot. If you're a lefty, you're bad. Marxist. If you're a classic liberal, I don't hate you, my friend. Thank you. We got a lot to get uh. to with a great Roddy Shell, comedic <laughs> legend, and I am proud to have him here and only here yes. on Magic Matt's <laughs> Outlaw Radio on YouTube. Thank you.
As I continue to be in the fog, don't let you be in the fog. But join us on OutlawRadioLive.com. Back in mere minutes with Magic Matt. I've had nothing but bad luck Since the day I saw the cat at my door So I came into you, sweet lady Answering your mystical call Crystal ball on the table A shocking place, an evil plexus of slums hide human creeping things, where filthy men and women live on penners of gin, where collars and clean shirts are decencies unknown, where every citizen wears a black eye and none ever combs his hair. This is Outlaw Radio. Is it too much to ask that you subscribe to Magic Matt's Outlaw Radio on YouTube? I mean, is that too much to ask? I mean, don't make me beg. Don't make the boy beg. I'll subscribe. Please, give the boy a chance. <laughs> we got Ronnie he, Shell. He, he, just wants to, he just wants to work. He wants you to punch subscribe. That's smash right. it. Just smash, smash the, it. Smash the subscribe button on YouTube. For the love of all things holy, ladies and gentlemen, punch the subscribe button. And you oh, know what? Do you it. You know, there, there are it. other Magic Mats out there, which I need right. to sue, but it would take me so much money to sue yeah. all the fake magic mats and a couple of outlaw radios too yes yes yeah. and we are the original we, yes. yes and only we're the ones that are heard throughout the world yeah and on, i was there on intestinal radio <laughs> i was there when you were yeah. when you yes. were heard and when you gra- were hot and, gra- <laughs> oh. and and great terrestrial stations throughout the nation and our lovely people in wisconsin <laughs> And this is Outlaw Radio. Hi, everybody. I'm Matt, a.k.a. Magic Matt, the man with so many monikers. That way I get more votes for Homecoming Queen. Yes, she did. <laughs> and, and Ronnie Shell was there in the beginning yes, of I Outlaw was. Radio. Yep. He was there before my brother Mart. Yep. He was there before damn near wow. everyone. I think I was there before the, your... Uh, what, uh, spousal equivalent? No, the girl. Yeah, one of the... Yes. Which girl? Which one? <laughs> there have been so many. There were the many. One that, the one that's so, still working. Ellen K. Oh, Ellen, Ellen K. K. Yeah. You were crazy about her. Speaking of... Ellen Kay, who is a uh, <laughs> is a radio personality here in Los Angeles. Um, yeah, I I know many a fan and fan dancer threw my name in the hopper to be inducted into the Radio Hall of Fame this year. I believe that I'm not old enough yet. Uh huh. And oh. they wait until you're in your freaking 70s, and I won't make it that long. So no. it's going to be a posthumous freaking in, uh, inductee into the Radio Hall of Fame. And what does that mean to me? Nothing. 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 I'm dirt. Oh. Right? I hate to say that. I'm di- well, I'm dust. I'm worms. Okay. Worm food. Oh, God. The museum, this just <laughs> hit the other day. And, and by the way... My heart didn't sink because I didn't expect this to happen because of my views politically. They don't like us on the right unless you're known as doing a talk show. Now, my inductee into the Radio Hall of Fame would have nothing to do with talk radio. It would have everything to do with my performance in Top 40 throughout the years. From Z100 New York to Kiss FM Twice to Houston, Texas to San Diego. Diego, to Philadelphia, yeah. to Seattle. To Cincinnati, where I'll be performing next Saturday night. I never, <laughs> never performed you didn't? in you didn't? Cincinnati, no. but Ronnie Shell, comedic legend Ronnie Shell, will be in Cincinnati yeah. this weekend. Next Saturday night. So this is what hit. 
The Museum of Broadcast Communications announced today its Radio Hall of Fame nominees for 2022. Voting for inductees began, oh, begins Tuesday, June 22nd, runs through July 8th. By the way, I don't care who you vote for on this page now. Because you're be not on it. I'm not on it. Right. Oh, see, no. see, Ronnie, you and I are friends because we think we alike. Do. Do, we do we not? We do. If we're not involved, screw you. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely right. The top six vote recipients will gain induction as as part of the 2022 Radio Hall of Fame, the two additional inductees, who cares? Okay, <laughs> this year's this year's nominees are Bob Stroud. Who's that? Right. right. I don't know. WDRV yeah. in Chicago. Not one to boast. I'm a nationally known radio personality. Wait a minute. What is WDRV in Chicago? Some radio station in Chicago. I never heard of it. Well, I lived in Chicago. How about Bobby OJ, WDIA in Memphis. Oh, God. I, oh. But, but if this guy is the Bobby OJ, that the OJs, the group who did Love Train and they had a bunch of hits, if he's the guy who's got to be in his 80s now, if mm -hmm. he's the same guy, then God love him. God bless him. He should be in there. Okay. Who else? This, see... The reason I'm not so pissed is I noticed some names here that I respect in radio, and oh. that, that, my friends, few and far between. And I'm not being cynical here. I'm telling you the honest-to-God truth. Well, is someone else on there? There, there is a name a here that should be in here before me. And who is that? Broadway Bill Lee, WCBS oh, yeah. in New York. Yeah. He's, uh, what is he now, 74 years old. Right. The guy is a brilliant radio, top 40 radio performer. He should be in this before me. Carol Miller, who is an album-orientated rock jock yeah. from WAXQ in New York. Carol should be in there. She should be in there. Well, you Hang on. It. You deserve it. Man. But Chris Mad Dog. WAXQ, where is that? WAXQ in New York. I've never a, heard of it. I'm I've from New York. Yeah, yeah, but Lori, you've been you haven't been in New York for many, many years. They're, the call letters change, my friend. Oh. Uh, who else did I like? Oh, 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 the, wait, I'll get to this. John and Ken, KFI, Los Angeles. Right. No, I should be in there before them. I agree with but you. But we're not in the same category. No. They're talk radio. Are they still on? They're sti still on. I don't listen, sort but they're of. on. Yeah. yeah. Here's another name. See, these are people that I forget about, but this is a name that should be in there before me. And you're going to say, who? But I know him, and he's brilliant. Kevin Matthews oh, from yeah. Chicago. Right. You know he's him? excellent, yes. The man is brilliant. He's really good. He does incredible impressions. He's been around forever. He's probably in his 70s. That's why I'm saying... I obviously am not old enough, but Kevin, God love you, God bless you, you should be in there. Larry Elder for talk radio. I like yes, Larry, Elder. Larry should be. Larry, in there. Larry should be there before John and Ken. Um, yeah. Let's see. Any other name? Any other names here? Uh, oh, Matt. Okay, Matt Siegel. I've never heard his act, no. but Matt Siegel from WXKS, that's KISS FM in Boston, he's been around forever. He so should, is an affiliate? He should probably be in there. Pat St. John mm -hmm. from Sirius XM. Yeah, I saw he's that. He's in his probably mid to late 70s. He was uh, in New York forever. He should be in there. Right. Uh, Walt Baby Love, you know that name. How old is he? he? He's got to be in his uh, mid 80s. Well, that's least. why you're not nominated, but you're said. not old enough. And, and by the way, I'm not coming up with excuses, but there is one. Yeah. Yeah. That is nominated, and I I guarantee ya because believe all women, oh. believe all females. Always. She will make. She will be inducted. Uh oh. Mark my words. Who shouldn't be in there? Oh no! Because she sort of grabbed onto my coattails here in Los Angeles when I was at Kiss FM. How tight? Get ready, Ronnie Shell. No. Uh -oh. Get ready, Ronnie Shell. No, oh, no. From KOST Coast here in Los Angeles, Ellen K. Oh my goodness! Ellen K. Nominated. I knew her so well for the Radio <laughs> Hall of Fame. <laughs> there you have it. Hey, Mart, gets old. Didn't you notice how I ignored it? Lori, gets old. Who, who are you talking to?
Your well, horse. you're doing horse sounds because uh, why are they doing that, Ronnie? When it comes I to Ellen no Kay, uh, well, uh, long long face? No, no. I what? think she's very pretty. But well, missed, missed being good looking by because her eyes are too close together. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, she's a lovely lady. <laughs> but Ellen Kay, and Ellen Kay, by the way, on the uh, Hollywood Walk of Fame as That's well. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, well, she's uh, she's smart. She knows how to kiss upwards. Well, certainly. Right, right, Ronnie. Ronnie. No comment. Casting coach. But R- Ronnie Shell, did you not know her when she was in San Francisco? Yes. Right. I brought her down to L.A., believe it or not. Yes. And... Uh, you do the math. She, I don't have to <laughs> oh, do the math, boy. Ronnie. <laughs> Ronnie's been around. Oh, you well. know, here's the thing, Matt. By the way, around, <laughs> down, down around. and around. Oh, she's a lovely lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, Lori? She... Shadow <laughs> Stevens. What? Shadow Stevens wasn't even. He never got a star. I don't know. Yeah, there no, no. you go. That's why I was wondering. What? Yeah, but but Shadow, Ste- Shadow Shadow Stevens may be in the Radio Hall of Fame. Where and is he, he? he probably is by now. But Lauren. he doesn't have a star. How come he's not here? No, but you're right about that. Shadow Stevens should have a star on the the Walk of Fame. Yes, Long he before why? your ex girlfriend. Yes, but how come he's not? How come he's not? Uh, why is he not here? Yeah. Because politically, he has a problem with my politics. Oh, okay. I never had a problem with his. Yeah. You will find that the folks on the right don't really care when it comes to relationships. Yeah. We don't care what side <laughs> you're on. Mm-hmm. But those on the left can't stand us mm-hmm. because, well, we're evil, even though we're not the evil ones and we're not the racist and we don't care what color you are or what sexual proclivity you happen to be. And did I mention it's Pride Month? And to that, I do have to throw out the uh, the question: wh- What are what are we what are we prideful for? For having sex with same sex? You so know what, Matt? So there there's pride in that. I don't understand. Is, I don't understand that. I'm gonna stop you down. And and, and P.S. You know I don't care about your sexual proclivation. And I made that word up. I like it, okay. though. But you, but uh, I don't care. Whatever happens, and I, I truly, on my daughter, I want you to have a happy day. I don't care. But w- pride? Yes. I don't understand it. Me either. Craig, I can, are you ready I can to go tell home? you. Okay, please, please, Lori Downey Jr. Holy crap. So when I was dancing on Broadway. Yeah. Everybody was in the closet. Yeah. And everyone was dying of AIDS. Right. And they died a horrible, horrible death. Nobody right. likes that. I mean, nobody who is a, a human being enjoys that in any way, shape, or form. And so now, finally, those people have a voice to be accepted in the community. No, no, they are more than accepted. The problem <laughs> no, here. No, they're not. Yes, oh, 100%. <clears throat> the problem is they want more than acceptance. They yeah, want a parade, they, they for Christ's sake. They want a parade. Give what? them the parade. <laughs> and they, by, the, by the way, okay, they want to be accepted. I want a they, white heterosexual parade. Uh, okay, okay. That's, that's really? Sort of, You're not going to show up? Hold, hold on. That's sort of obvious, Tattoo Dave. <laughs> but but the, the, the point here is that, <clears throat> okay, they want to be accepted they want to they're they're your neighbors right they're your neighbors they're the people you dine with and they're at the next table right Just about everybody then I know why, is gay. when we watch the stinking parade do we see freaky sons of bitches doing weird crap on floats and males with boobies I didn't see that that Matt. Th- well, you you're, talk, I guess you're not watching the Pride Parade in the Pride West parade. Hollywood. Oh, my Gre- God. Greg, Greg, so you ain't home. First time, for I the mean, first time, Matt, yes. they're getting a Pride Parade in West Hollywood, which is No, where, for the first time? Yes. What, 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 what are you talking about? No, you're, since you're COVID. Since oh COVID, COVID stopped down and the so parades. They they have always wanna... they've had parades for oh gazillions of years, Lori. What are you speaking to? Let me tell you something. I'm not a gay woman. I'm not a lesbian. I love men. I wish you were. A threesome would be a beautiful <laughs> thing for me. <laughs> By the way, I and and <laughs> my my conservative friends out there, I I I love you dearly because you know we're on the same page. But damn it, as a heterosexual oh male, the thought of two gorgeous just women with with me? It's good. Oh my god. Oh, yes. Sign it's me good. up. Yeah. They may sign not me up. Sign up with you, Matt. That's what? just the point. What? They what? might not want to sign Greg? up with you. Greg, Greg, they might 
not want to sign up with you. Lori, Lori, I'm okay, another opportunity. To, okay, good, Lori. Greg. It's not even thinly veiled how much you dislike Matt, me. Nobody like wants I to sign up with you either, for like Christ's sake. Like I give an ass. Get your ego out of your head. Wait, nobody wants to sign up with you Wait a second, I wasn't talking about my ego. How did my ego enter into this? I was this? just being honest. Greg, are you ready to go home? <laughs> 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 one, one, fight. Well, no, I don't want to say final. I don't want to say last. Not with a guy who's 90 years old. <laughs> we'll do we'll do another we'll do another segment with Ronnie Shell next. Then I'm going home. By the way, Ellen K in the Radio Hall of Fame. Is is she that should, ridiculous? She should be there. You bet, Ronnie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be this after back on YouTube where Magic Matt's Outlaw Radio. Laboratories with over 200 research workers, academic staff, and PhD students worked around the clock seven days a week for nine years. And today we deliver broadcasting from atomic scale components, 21st century technology, talk stars, and subliminal messaging. Motivating, stimulating, mildly erotic, 24 7. Outlaw Radio. 
Before we we have to leave this frivolity, you may want to go out with this song because you haven't played this yet, right, Lori? You were uh, on hiatus the day Well, my that, daughter was having brain surgery that day. Yeah, the day that I added this song. Because yeah. I know that you want to yeah. dance to this. Aren't you come out of it? But uh, we'll, we should go out with this song right. so our folks on YouTube can enjoy you dancing on Magic Matt's Outlaw yes. Radio. No? So, yeah, so anything I say, then our producer just opposites day. No, okay. bad idea. No, I'll catch her on this one. All right, Ronnie Shell, yes? <laughs> Ronnie, the great Ronnie Shell. I'll catch her on this one. Okay. You ready? Yes? Okay. Well, turn the music off. <laughs> okay. I, All right, no. I'll bring it down for Go ahead. Ronnie. You ready? Yeah. Uh -huh. You forgot? So God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He believed in him will have life eternal. What about that? What, how about that, Lori? Yeah. Huh? I, I believe in that. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm yeah. a Christian woman. I love that. There you go. All right. You're and okay. You're okay. Let, you know. let me add to that, Ronnie I'm glad Shell. I'm okay. The yeah. comedic legend, yes. Ronnie Shell. Yes. At a party at someone's house. Yes. Am I the only one if there's a rack of towels that goes behind and uses the back of the towel to dry it. my hands. I do it. Or does everyone do that? And so we all get oh, right. the it. same dirty towel. Greg does it. <laughs> right? Oh. Greg does it? Yeah. But Mark, how about you? I bring my own towel. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's, yeah, that's something that's been bugging me for years. Because <laughs> Not I've always, me. I don't even wash my hands. I've, <laughs> <laughs> I've always done that. Hey, boys, what you do is you use the toilet paper. <laughs> okay. You know, that's another thing. Well, you know, females, they're so clean, aren't yeah. they? No. Have you have you ever been in a female bathroom yes, at I a have. restaurant or a bar? I work as a plumber. Lori, uh, are they disgusting? Well, I was pretty nasty. They're the most are disgusting they... freaking... Uh, women? No. no. And no. Women are disgusting, Ronnie. And Finally, and f well, as Rock Hudson's mom used to say, it's like a cow's udder. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Well, that, that's true. That's a quote. Yeah, I know. That is true. Unfortunately, it is. The other thing, before we have to go for, uh, and leave this frivolity alone for another week, the word amazing. Amazing. Everything is amazing. It is one of those overused words by millennials and younger that drive me effing crazy. Everything is amazing, and every sentence contains the word amazing. As I've said before on this program, and I'll say it again, one thing, in my opinion, is amazing, and something else comes in second. But number one, childbirth to me is amazing. It is. The other thing that's amazing is flight. Mm -hmm. When I watch those ginormous uh, oil guzzling uh, pieces of metal fly through the air with a gazillion people, that I find amazing. Mm -hmm. But all of these other things and this food is amazing, no it's not. It's simply good. Stop using it. You friggin' millennials and younger idiot sticks. Matt, you're you know, amazing. You're so, that's amazing. That is amazing, isn't it? The great Ronnie Shell, the great Mr. Uh, Zuckman, no. The uh, great Mr. Zuckerberg, no, that would be wrong. <laughs> hey, David, David. David Zucker of airplane fame, Robert Hayes, Captain Stryker on airplane, my friend over there, Tattoo Dave, my brother Marty, the incredible Ronnie Shell. And his son. Who will be in Ohio this uh, weekend. Yes. Mark C.G. Boyer, hey. Gregums, Greg Shell. I love you dearly. And what our about me? My was I not? Did she? Needy. Were, you needy. Were, needy. Needy. Yeah. yeah. And am. my producer, Lori Downey Jr., I'm a needy woman. Who, timing, timing. who may be dancing to this song as we leave you for another week. Thank you to our affiliates. I'll continue to be Magic Matt on Outlaw Radio. On YouTube, it's Magic Matt's Outlaw Radio. Please don't forget, bumblebees can't fly. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Space, but you can't even find my place.